Uh, apparently, we just went live, even though the camera just went blank. Oh. I have no idea what happened. Hold on. Uh, if we are live, bear with me. Something just happened. I don't know because we hit, the camera was active. I saw it active earlier. It just. But it says we're live now, so I have no idea. Is the little light on by the camera? Um, where's the camera? I don't know. Otherwise, you'd see a light. Yeah, it just says a black screen, so I'm not sure if it's my camera doing anything. Off somehow. It's weird. Okay. Um, because if it's just black and us snarking, that'll be fine. Because I don't think anybody watches this except for me. <laughs> I like my own voice. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Bear with me, hold on. We are live, it's just blue screen though. So okay, um sorry no one can see us. Um the camera shut off somehow. We don't know how. I don't even want to bother figuring it out, honestly. But we're doing the two towers, so it's not like you're ever really looking at us when you're watching the two towers. Anyway, so um second movie of the Lord of the Rings trilogy, obviously. I, I don't know if this is my favorite or not, my but favorite. your favorite, yeah, my favorite, fair enough. It's got the most Legolas, and also the skateboarding Legolas on the shield down yes. the stairs. <laughs> that scene, I don't know why, but that scene just makes me laugh horribly. So anyway, um, we'll go ahead and get in. This is a longer movie, so if you have your DVD or however, because this is on, it's on HBO or Prime, isn't it? It's on something. Uh, it's on some streaming service. I don't remember which. Probably Prime, considering that's where Rings of Power is. Um, so go ahead, pull that up, and get through the FBI warnings. And if you've got everything ready, we'll go ahead and get started. And in three, two, one, play. And uh, yes, we do have snacks. I would show you, but like I said, the camera is not working. So bear with us. Be a long day, guys. Yep. <laughs> And uh, obviously, we will be taking a break between this movie and Return of the King. So, don't worry, yeah. yeah. <laughs> New Line Cinema presents. Um, did I mention that when New Line Cinema was making this, they pretty much went all in on this? And if this movie, had, these movies had flopped, New Line Cinema would have gone bankrupt a lot sooner than what they actually ended up did going bankrupt. Oh, shit. Yeah. Because, well, I mean, you know, they made these movies all at once. And... I didn't know that. I didn't know that Peter Jackson really wanted to make these movies. And he knew it was going to be a hard sell. He didn't. He had managed to split it into two movies. And mm -hmm. he was trying to pitch The Lord of the Rings as a two movie deal. And New Line Cinema looked at it and said, no, do the three movies, do it justice, go yeah. for it. And I know, like you said, they went all in on mm -hmm. it. They put a lot of faith into them. Yep. I can't believe they went bankrupt on that. Almost went bankrupt. No, I can't believe they went mm -hmm. bankrupt considering they at least have this in the arsenal. Mm -hmm. Paramount skimmed along for the longest time just because of Star Trek. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very much. <laughs> mm. You got that lifeline going. I remember just before this movie came out, they had like a bunch of promo shit, right? Mm -hmm. And one of them was my school library had bookmarks of all the characters. <laughs> and of course, I went to the library and got them all because... I mostly wanted Legolas, but couldn't resist the collecting them all. And so I was reading a book at lunch, and I had the Gandalf. And this girl goes, I thought Gandalf was dead. Nope. <laughs> nope. That's not. Yep. He's on the bookmark. Because these bookmarks came out before the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, it was promotional material. Mm -hmm. Did they have one for Boromir then, probably? I don't know. No, I, no Boromir. Yeah. Because it was of Gandalf the White. Well, he's in a flashback in the extended edition. Or, yeah, he's in a flashback in the extended edition here. Which, if you haven't seen the extended edition, you may not know. Yeah, ow. You watch him go yeah. fly, you fools. Yep. Uh, oh, he's also there. Right yeah. There. <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah, one scene there, but there's one other scene later. But, and like I said, I kind of think they should have kept it to the books where he doesn't actually manage to grab ledge. He just goes over. Because otherwise, it is kind of like, hey, Boromir, you got a shield. Run over there. Use your shield to make sure no one shoots you with an arrow and pull him up. Yeah. yeah. Although, this. Yeah, that's all. This is good, too. It's like, all right. We're going to take each other out. Let's do this. And uh, I mentioned before that the Balrog is a Maiar and the Gandalf is also a Maiar, which are. I use the, I use the term angels, even though there's no. 
there's no that's the best word that fits honestly yeah thank you um but like it like i said i use the word angel because like i said it's the only word that i can really think of that fits because they are from the heavens they were they created arda which is the world they live in um and but they were but the balrogs came in it with morgoth who's the evil who's the evil of the world basically and Gandalf came in the third age to combat Sauron. So it is like, you know, these are two beings are of equal strength and equal power. So, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of lore there that I could go into, but it would, like I said, it'd be a long time and I don't want to waste everybody because we'd be here all day. It's be sending them so Merlion at that point. Well, I should probably tell them what happened yesterday, shouldn't I? Oh, yes. You should. <laughs> um, we'll just watch Frodo sleep. Yeah. 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 There's not a lot going on here anyway. But um, yesterday, while we were at NerdCon, they had a, a panel, a uh, panel, a booth of the Tolkien Society, and they had a little quiz. So I go up there, and I'm, well, every, like I said, knowing me, I just went up and answered the quiz. Oh, real quick. Uh, <laughs> the rope. This is why Gladriel gave them the rope, because she, like I said, she foresaw they that they would need the rope a lot more than what they would need knives for. And what happens later is absolutely hilarious. Um, this. What is that? that it, what, it, it answers later, but he falls. It's like, nope, the ground's right there anyway. Don't worry. Oh. I think I'm on the bottom. Yeah, you fell two feet in the which, granted, if it gets real foggy, you cannot see two feet in front of your face. Nope. So, yeah, you can't but see your hand in front of your face. Yeah, I'm but sure. it, yeah, he's like, Rose. "What is it? What's so important about this box?" Is it a ring for Rosie? I wish. <laughs> no, it's just a bit of seasoning. He was hoping they could get some roast chicken because he's like perpetually good mood, and it's like, okay, dude, that's a little too much. <laughs> but anyway. Well, they, like I said, they were, had this little quiz that you could fill out. So I start filling it out and, um, I got, I can't remember how, I think, uh, I think it were 55 points and I got 45 of them right. And these were like, a lot of them were obscure points that most people don't know. And as we're talking, you know, as we're talking, I start singing the songs from Tolkien too. And the Tolkien Society had a signed picture of Peter Jackson that, the sponsors had given them to give to someone who, you know, who they deemed worthy, basically. And they gave it to me. And this is hilarious. It's special <laughs> Elven Rope. Yep. It knows. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah, I got a signed picture of Peter Jackson. And I I was almost crying when they gave it to me. And also, Marie scared the little shit out of me because she popped up right next to me. I didn't see her coming, and I just looked over, and ah, there she was. I walked up behind him, and he turned around and jumped. You, you were right. I just didn't expect you to be there. Like I said, I didn't hear you or anything, and then all of a sudden, you were there. And I'm very easy to scare, obviously, too. So, Because when I'm on my own little world like that, I'm in my own little world, and I don't pay attention to anything. The teachers I clean for can testament that, you know, once I put those headphones on, forget it. I'm gone. If you need to talk to me, you're going to scare the shit out of me. <laughs> Most people are like that. It's fine. So, also, real quick, if you're ever climbing somewhere with rope and you need to retrieve the rope, it's better not to do a knot. It's just wrap it around and then hold both ends as you go down. Yeah. And then that way, when you hit the ground, obviously, I mean, it, happens, it only puts half the rope on you, but... That way, it's like, oh, when you get the bomb, you just take the one half, pull, and the other half will go around. But like I said, it basically cuts the amount of rope you have in half. So it is a little risky if you need a long one. Lambda spread? Lambda yep. spread? <laughs> and more lambda spread. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they've actually done, like, uh, like, you know, what would lemon spread actually be? Um, the best people can come up with is, I mean, obviously, because lemon spread is obviously a little bit magical, but, uh, the best, like, we could come up with is basically, like, a really, really good Pop-Tart. It's, a it's, a like, a, a bread substance with some kind of filling. I feel like, oh, that's fair. 
So I, I don't remember how the, exactly the book describes it, but that's basically what we what a lot of people. Oh God, they, that is so miserable. <laughs> having having camped out in situations like that, it is miserable. It sucks. Yeah, and you're, it's like he knows. Doesn't see anything, but. They gave me two pieces of beef jerky that wrapped together in one. Uh, well, <laughs> it's just a really big piece of jerky. You can pull a piece out, it's all stuck together. I took, uh, I took Jacob to Bucky's yesterday, and we're eating, we got all of our snacks from there. So if you ever, if you don't know what Bucky's is, you need to find one in Texas. And yes. visit it. It's they need to expand to South Dakota. I love it. It was awesome. <laughs> It's an experience. There's no explaining it. Mm -hmm. It was awesome. And I want one to be in South Dakota now. Because I would go there all the time. <laughs> and the scene. In the books, both Sam and Frodo are... I mean, because... Um, um, they're hiding under their elvish cloak so Gollum can't see them, which becomes a big plot point. Will you stop, dog? Wow. Those are gummy bears. You will not like those. <laughs> Do not underestimate how much. Yeah, food good my point. Like. Ash! Sit. Good dog. Um, but um, the Sam and Frodo are hiding under their elvish, blank, ever, oh, elvish boy, cloaks. Ash! Sit. Oh, eat good dogs. You can't hand off food. Yeah. So they're supposed to be hiding under Yeah, they're hiding under his cloaks. And then when Gollum is, because Gollum is, knows they went that way, but he doesn't see them there. So he's like, oh, they must have gone a little, a little bit further. Um, and then when Gollum reaches the end, Sam literally tackles him. And then they get into this fight. And which pretty much, I mean, <laughs> oh gosh, that one look is just. Yeah, and Gollum is yeah surprisingly strong for being five hundred years old and only eating fish. Ow! Wow, is Gollum a vampire? He just bit his neck. Uh, you're gonna want to get that treated because that's gonna get infected. That's definitely gonna get infected. People's mouths are really dirty. Mm -hmm. So much bacteria in there. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Man, the subtitles really take away the drama, the drama of his uh, pause there before Gollum. Yeah. It's like, okay, release him. And let's go. And then you see, I want, look at his eyes. His eyes change when he goes from Gollum to Smeagol. Or as Sam puts it, slinker to stinker. I, li I like those like names that Sam gives them, honestly. And uh, this also, um, yeah, the rope for some reason, actually does hurt Gollum a lot. Because uh, they they uh, don't tie it around his neck in the book. They tie it around his ankle. And literally, I mean, Gollum's like, oh, yeah, we can put a rope on him and go that way you guys don't lose. I mean, he's totally willing to do it. But it literally, as soon as the rope touches him, he, it, he starts crying out in pain. He can't stand it. And it's like, it's like because for the most part, elves are less corrupted than humans. And Gollum being human, number one, and number two having spent so much time in the presence of the ring. Yeah, he doesn't like the light. He's I mean he's he's on I mean he's borderline orcish already because of how corrupted he's been. So yeah, so yeah, this part does no he does not hold in the rope like that. He's literally screaming out in pain of ow 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 this hurts. Please God I'll take it off. And here the promises in Lord of the Rings also need to be mentioned because when you make a promise or a you know something like that, it they you it holds to you. So Gollum, I mean, this is a little bit of a spoiler, but Gollum swears that he will not let the ring um, gum to Sauron's hands. So he becomes the very vessel that carries it into the lava, unwillingly, but. But every time someone makes a promise or a curse like that, they're gonna hold to it. Like the the um the dead army that we see in the third movie, another great example of we swear we will fight Sauron. If you don't, well, guess what? You're gonna stay 
you're gonna stay in an unlive state until you do. Fair bite fart. Oh wow. Just hit, you just had something. Just you know. Okay. I've been doing that for two years. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah, the captured man took me there. Yep. And that that is actually a big moment in the book where Frodo shows him mercy because he's like, what is this? Because he's been, because he's, for the past 500 years, he's felt nothing but scorn and hate from other people. Okay. This is the first, yeah, this is the first time someone's actually <laughs> been nice to him. So he's like, what the heck? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, They would hear you, dude. <laughs> yep. But only if the plot wants Yeah, there he's like freaks out. No, it's like it's like, yep. Yeah. <laughs> I do love that. It's like he let us into a corner and it's just like, nope, this way. <laughs> The subtitle just called him Smeagol. Yep. I think that... Do we even know his? that's, like, his real name yet? Uh, in the extended version, yes. Uh, because they did... Because in the extended version of the Fellowship of the Ring, Gandalf says Smeagol. So, but in the theatrical edition, no. In the theatrical edition, it just comes out that... Uh, yeah, here, um, orcs are not supposed to be able to travel in sunlight, but here they are for reasons, but anyway. Um, yeah. The orcs are the ones that are a little hunched over creatures. The urkai are the ones that are they standing. They didn't even mention that in the fellowship mm -hmm. that they can't travel at, during the day. Mm -hmm. And then, yep, interesting. So, so yeah, but they, they didn't attack during the day. And the, at the end of the fellowship, those were urukai. Oh, those were are all yeah, urukai. Yeah, they were oh. all urukai. All right. So, and then here, uh, Mary is clearly out of it. He's got a bruise on his head. He's like, he's sick. He needs water. So, what do they do? Give him some medicine. We're just gonna shove a boatload of like orcas grog down his throat. Yeah. Um, I know of a story. I don't know if it influenced this or not, but um, there's a tradition in uh, I think it's the Marines. I can't remember, but they will actually drink rattlesnake blood. So once while a trainee got real sick. They, the Marines being absolute assholes for as medicine forced him to drink a bunch of freaking rattlesnake blood. It's like, so yeah, I don't know if that influenced this or not. I just heard it from a Marine who says he was an extra in this. I don't know if that's true or not, obviously. I just heard it from some random podcast. But here, yeah, what do you smell? Yeah, because the they got the sense of smell like dogs. They picked up our trail. Yeah, it's not that hard to pick up your guys' trail. You're an army. And here. Right, and it's not like they're very lightfoot. They're leading yeah, plenty yeah, of Yeah, there you have your, your, number one, you already weigh, you know, 150 pounds, and you're carrying another 70 pounds of armor. You're going to leave footprints. And you see Pippin leave <laughs> yeah. his pen. Yeah. Which, again, and the theatrical version of Fellowship, you don't see the elves give them this stuff, so mm -hmm. you don't realize that, oh, this is special elvish stuff. Yeah. So you don't, yeah, you don't see anything important yeah. about it. I yeah, mean, but they, it's like, it's it's a decent plot point yeah. right now, because this is in the theatrical version where they see it, and they're like, this is an elvish pin, it doesn't just lightly yeah. fall. It's like, then why didn't you explain that in the theatrical yeah. fellowship? Yeah. So, um, also, we gotta give it to John Rice davies who... Is suffering through his make because of uh, the makeup he wore gave him a severe aller allergic reaction, and he's also huffing the most amount of armor in these running scenes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Except for that, that's his body double. yeah, that's his body double. But a lot of times when you see them run like there, that's actually him. You can tell because of the different how you know far he is back that makes him look smaller. But um, but a lot of these he is actually running, and it's like 
he's he's suffering <laughs> to put it like no i remember there was a uh, um during a bloopers he's like that man like, see like i mean he's like totally panting out of breath see, here's the whole thing. yeah I here it's like the leaves of, of orange do not idly fall but again in the theatrical fellowship version yeah it's a yeah you don't, see, a, yeah, you don't see, from the yeah elves. you do ah. yeah ouch <laughs> and uh apparently that fall um or I'm not sure if it was that fall actually, but apparently John Rice Davies also broke a rib while Whoa. during this movie. Um, they all broke something, or maybe it was over yeah, short distances, or like maybe it was short. maybe it was Legolas who broke the rib. I can't remember. Um, because I know all three of them suffered a broken uh, an injury of some sort. Uh, like I said, it was either, I I think it was John Rice Davies suffered uh, broke a rib during a fall. I can't remember what happened to, or I can't remember what happened to Orlando Bloom unless it was him that broke the rib. In which case, I don't remember what happened to John Rice Davies. But I ever think everybody knows what happens to Viggo Mortensen. We will be getting to that in a bit. Oh, his foot in the Where he LLC. breaks his toe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there it is. Look at the Hobbit's Isengard. Look at the Hobbit's to Isengard. Do Isengard. <laughs> oh, dear. That was the best like, <laughs> internet meme ever. <laughs> Before memes were a thing. I don't know. I think there's another one that comes out later in the movie, too. The Taters Precious. Potatoes. I think, actually, come to think of it, the Potatoes <laughs> one is definitely more famous. But the, they're taking the Hobbit's to Isengard. It's such a good it's one. It's a good one, too. Yeah. <laughs> taking the Hobbit's to Isengard. <laughs> yeah. I think if it weren't for the taking the Hobbit's to Isengard, we wouldn't have the song Chrissy Wake Up. Because... <laughs> That was somebody doing the same thing. That's a... Uh, holy cow, you're right. Yep. So, um, like, people do that a lot these days. Yeah. <laughs> and this was the first time someone had done that. Yeah. And they're, they pretty much spell out why they call this the Two Towers, because the union of Orkthank and Baradur. So... And, oh, gosh. Ow! You just had a bunch of roofs collapse on your back, buddy. Yep. Yeah, and the orcs are 100% a slave race. And again, this is not how you forge swords. You don't just pour out a molt of liquid. Cause that's not at all how you forge yeah. swords. I've watched Forged in Fire. Yeah. That's how you do it at all. Because I think I, can, I think I think you could make a sword like that, but it'd be so brittle. Yeah, it I would don't not think, be a good yeah. sword. And there, yeah, this is it how... It doesn't have any layers or anything to it. Like, yeah. It'd be very weak. Yeah. So, but yeah, I, I like... I, I do want to say because that is a good shorthand of like, okay, how are how are we producing this army? Because like I said, in the books, he's breeding orcs and human to make to make all these, you know, Urukai. In this, it's like, I mean, it almost like I said, it almost kind of looks like Isengard was like a prison for corrupted elves and orcs, and they're just freeing them, is kind of what it looks like. But it is oh here. I thought they were just being like born from the orcs. Yeah, you could argue that too. Oh, this, uh, the Blood Oaths, which are a huge... Or, I don't remember those ever being a thing in um, in The Lord of the Rings, but it's huge. It's a huge part of Nordic history, Roman history, any type of Celtic history, for that matter. Yeah. Um, I know Peter Jackson has cameo in this movie, but I don't remember where it is, and I, I don't remember if it's in this scene or later. No, it's later. I just, yeah, it's later. It's in uh, Battle of Helm's Deep. Anyway, and yeah, here it's just this is what Saruman does, but it's because like, well, I only have so many because he only has so many soldiers at his disposal. So what does he do? He goes to the wild men who have been you know like living in mountains, mountainous regions, and he like starts saying like. You know, the horsemen drove you here. You know, go kill them. And it's like, no, the horsemen didn't drive. Well, the horsemen did drive you there, but you guys were kind of deserved it because you guys were kind of, you know, mur- you know, right. they were Vikings. They're raping. They're pillaging. They're doing every damn bad. Well, yeah, but so. they believe they're the victims, which yeah. is what Saruman's playing mm-hmm. on. Yeah. So. And here, this is like, it's all, it's like, oh, this is a very sad part of, because you think the mother's not going to make it, make it. She's just saving your children. Uh, there is a happy ending for that later, even though, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or, 
But they're just giving you someone to empathize with. Yeah, they're just yeah, they're just trying to pull the emotional heartstrings. Yeah. Um, storytelling. Um, I did like there was one guy there carrying a pitchfork. I it never says it, but I do like the idea of like there are some guys who are like, okay, we're gonna do our best to fight, but there's still too many of them we can't fight. I mean, like, they're also just farmers; they're not yeah. trained. Yeah. And here, what this, is Carl Urban? Guy, Carl Urban. I thought his favorite actor. <laughs> <laughs> he's in everything. No, he's not. Is he? Uh, is he in Star Wars I, I think he. I think he got cast in the new Star Wars movie. The new Star Wars movie that kind of. That's the one I, thing he's not in. Yeah, because I saw he was cast. I think I saw that he was cast for something with Star Wars. I don't remember what. He needs to be. Yeah, and here these are not Orcs of Mordor. Um, this is a plot point in the in the books. There are two. Uh, Aramir's not out in the wilds. Aramir's in um. Edoras, which is the capital of Rohan, um, they the reason and Theodred is out. Um, the orcs literally pretty much staged an assassination attempt because Wormtug has control of the king, but he doesn't have to control of the entire core yet. He specifically doesn't have Aomir or Theodred. Apparently, Carl Urban played a stormtrooper in The Rise of Skywalker. There it is. Why why am I not surprised? Anyway. <laughs> you didn't play a stormtrooper in those new movies, though, let's be honest. Yeah. Kevin Smith voiced one. Yeah, everybody. Steve Craig was one. Anybody were, who's anybody. If you were friends with J.J. Abrams, you were a stormtrooper. And Carl movies. Urban and J.J. Abrams are good friends. That's why he got... Yeah, um, they would have met on uh, Star Trek. Yeah, they, they love... They're really good friends. But um, anyway... Like I was saying, Theodred is the one, like, like I said, Grima has control of the king. He has control of most of the court. The two significant members he doesn't have control of is Aomir, who's in at arrest, and Theodred, who's not. So as a way to remedy this, he arrests Aomir, and the orcs literally just stage an attack to kill Theodred. And literally, as because I mean, there's a bunch of soldiers around them. They're all fighting. And as soon as they kill Theodred, all right, retreat, we're done, we're good. And that's literally the entire thing. So, um, and in this, they just, um, there's another, uh, Ek- Ekenbrand is his name. There's another Rohan soldier that, because, um, Aomir's at the Battle of Helm's Deep with Aragorn the entire time. And it's like, they go back and forth fighting the entire wall. Um, in this, they just decide to combine Aomir into Ekenbrand and Ekenbrand and together. And to be fair, I think that's a smart move because otherwise you're going to have to explain who the heck is this guy. And, it, you know, it's just... Well, I'm, let, let me just put it this way. In the Lord of the Rings books, the number of named characters is somewhere between 200 and too many. So you got to kind of cut, you got to kind of cut corners here and there. <laughs> yeah. I don't remember if Grima was ever like lustful of Eowyn in the books, but it is a good detail to add. So. I can't remember if it's in the books or not, though. Or, so you'll have to forgive me on that. It's been a while since I've read them. <clears throat> and here. Yeah. Stop being a fucking creep. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's amazing. If you were to just be not creepy mm-hmm. and say hi, maybe she would yeah. like you. But no, mm-hmm. you're a freaking creep. Mm-hmm. Who can't take no for an answer. Actually, he probably never even tried to ask it. Yeah. Hey, Percy. And here, here, like I said, it's one hundred percent. He's been. That's a signature. Yeah. That looks like he got killed halfway. <laughs> yeah, through. yeah. No, where we were talking about uh, the castle of Arg. Like, yeah, yeah. that's that's, that's he, literally he the. <laughs> while he was signing his name. Yeah, pretty much. So. I'm pretty sure he was not in the right state of mind mm-hmm. to be signing yeah. orders. Orders, um, anything signed under duress is not a legal binding document. But apparently, that's not the case in. Yeah. Oh, Rohan. Well, apparently, it's not the case in a lot of shows. Unfortunately. Yeah, here, like I said, you, John Rice Davis obviously is just fuck, fuck, because you gotta remember they're doing take after take after take. Yeah, and that poor not, guy. Yeah, that's not acting right there. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that, no, that's not acting. He's legit. Oh, God, I'm dying. <laughs> oh, man. So. The theme there, that's nice. Yep. 
There are so many themes, and they're all awesome. I think we, we I think we mentioned that in the first one. There are how many themes there are between the movies. Yeah. Yeah, you're just taking a breather, though. You're not gonna have time to sit and you know chat and have a fire. But apparently, they got fires real quick. Anyway, because there are two in the background right there. Anyway, yeah. Um, in the book, I don't remember if Mary suffers an injury or not. I don't think he does, but apparently this, they gave him a poor concussion. Granted, that is also possible that he, like, fell during the course, uh, or in just in the fact that they, when they were making this movie, they're obviously camping on New Zealand, and they don't work every single day. So, I mean, Orlando Bloom is notorious for, he went skydiving, he went, you know, bungee jumping, he went everywhere, um, and you know, the act, you know, the production company said, you know, hey, don't do anything that might hurt you, but they did anything that could hurt them. So, it is possible that um, the actor suffered a, a head injury of some kind and they just worked it into the movie like that. Um, because that happened, that happens a lot in movie. I know of it, it happened in Troy once where Eric Bana got whacked in the nose. And but it but it worked because it's like oh hey that actually they don't actually show up but it's like hey you got a bloody nose that actually looks good for your dead deceased corpse so <laughs> yeah and they're they're not for eating I don't remember if this is in the book or not I think it is <laughs> but I'm not a line for live like this <laughs> but yeah what about their legs uh, Armand told you to bring them back on uh, live and unspoiled yep unspoiled but. Yeah. See, even he remembered. Yeah. Spoiled. Here, yeah. Hey, I'm not going to question Sauron. Yeah, no doubt. Because <laughs> Sauron is also a Maiar. Granted, Sauron is specifically listed as the most powerful of the Maiar. But, yeah, I wouldn't want to screw with him. Yeah, it's like they think we have the ring. It's like as soon as they find out we don't work dead, they're just yeah. Hello, this part here is always I love the meme. I that, said no. Yeah, here this part here meets back on our menu, boys. So apparently, orcs know what a menu is. So I just very I just question what kind of dining establishments there are in Isengard and in Mordor. <laughs> I mean, they're also cannibals. So yeah, too. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure they have CD bars and shit. Yeah, why not? <laughs> Probably, yeah. Where are their CD bars? Come on Good now. point. That's a very good point. And here, uh, there's a dead body right behind you that you could easily go take a month, John. But no, you're going to... Uh, yeah, by the way, that would hurt. <laughs> why do they want to eat the dead body? He wants something fresh. Yeah, well, it's, that's body died two minutes ago. It's still warm. So, but yeah, here. He's never had halflings before. <laughs> yeah, good point. He knows what he wants exotic meat. Like. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, oh god. And uh yeah, the the nice shot, nice parting shot there, uh, where you see him, you know, shoot the bow from behind him. It, it, the it's a parting. Oh, no, dead. Yeah, here. Oh uh, also look, his vines are undone already, but they're not undone yet in the actual lore, so continuity error. Wait, what was undone? Uh his because his oh, arms were yeah, apart. Arms were and when they're supposed to be still um bound yeah. together. But, uh, oh no, there's a battle. They're dead yeah. already. But in here, the Hobbit's side yeah, in here, the in the I like how the book does it better. They don't hide. They literally like, oh, we're just gonna sit out in the open, and they'll see us, and they'll come up to us. But they don't see them because the elvish cloaks keep them hidden, and they for, totally forget. Oh, we're wearing elvish cloaks, so they literally stand up, and then Aramir's like, or not up, uh, but yeah, he's like, where the hell did you come from? <laughs> Like, wait, what the? Did we just pass by this someone? Yeah, pretty much. Like, where were your scouts? How did you not realize there were mm -hmm. three people hiding? Like, you, they could have been an ambush. How yeah. are you not paying attention? Yeah, that is something that kind of bugged me too. It's like, you think they'd have one rider heading out first as a scout, but. Yeah. Aragorn's like, wait, I thought we were friends. We're the friends. part that gets me is you see all of them point their spears, including the riders who are behind. And it's very much a thing from Aladdin, uh, the King of Thieves, I think the third movie is called. Oh my god, who remembers that movie? Yeah, but there's a specific scene where Genie like does a code red thing and just surrounds the king 
with a bunch of guns. And by the way, the King of Thieves is also played by John Rice Davies. Anyway. Is he? Yeah. Wow. But uh, they literally surround him, and he's, they're just like, <coughs> sorry, I'm eating. But they literally say, do not attempt to move or we'll be shooting ourselves because there's just like a thousand of them lined up behind each other with all their guns pointing forward. It's going to hit somebody. So the guys in back there is like, do not attempt to move or we will stab the poor bastard in front of us who might just happen to be our guy. But um, in the book, I like how the book does that a little bit better. Because in the book, uh, Errol Mir says, I don't remember exactly what he said, what the exact words are. But he said, but he, but they mentioned that they come from Lorien, and he says the, you know, like there's a witch king there or a witch there that, you know, something, something. I don't remember the exact term. And then Gimli gets upset, even though it was the exact same thing that he said in the Fellowship of the Ring before he saw Galadriel, and that's what causes, you know, the whole "I would cut off your head, dwarf," if it stood a little higher from the ground. And then Legolas is like, "Nope," because <laughs> Legolas and Gimli are now very good friends. I really wish they had done more in the books and even in, in the books too to emphasize that. But yeah, they kind of, it's not a real mention here, unfortunately, either. Oh. Well, what? Ash! Okay, no. do you, at this point, be like, do your men remember burning any child-sized yeah. corpses? Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like even that's something that you would, like, mm. after killing a bunch of orcs, seeing two child-sized, like, halfways, um, yeah. you'd be like, oh, crap. Like, that would stick out to me, I would think, mm-hmm. if, as you're collecting corpses, if you saw something yep. like that. Yep. Um, and uh, as... Just to mention how obscure the quiz that we took was. One of the questions was, identify the rider that goes with the horse. The two horses there, Hasubel and Arod. Legolas and Gimli get Arod. Hasubel is to Aragorn. At least until he gets Brago. <laughs> anyway. Um, but yeah. Uh, in the books, they it's very much the same thing. Except there's like, you know, 2,000 guys here. They don't exactly have time to go through. So, anyway, by the way, did anybody put, you know, two child sized bodies in the fire pit. Um but shelter. but yeah you yeah I do think that it is kind of like a thing but of I also feel like if you were the guy that found these child like Yeah you'd bodies, be like hey you would go up to the guy and be like hey what's this? A little this? weird. Yeah. So My and then here I do love this <laughs> I do love that just the work head <laughs> It's water dog you have your own water. <laughs> Stop it. Yeah. Bash. 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 Yeah, here he finds one of the belts. Um, and we get it, we get an explanation. Yeah, but it's like he's oh. one of their wee belts. And here's where Aragorn breaks or Vigo Mortensen breaks his toes. I think he broke two of them. He kicks the helmet, and yeah, that's uh I don't think that Yell is actually acting because he's legit in pain. <laughs> But um, I do know it's scripted that he yells, but I don't think that particular yell was. Did they do that kick in one take then? <laughs> no, they did four. Oh, he kicked gosh. it four times. Oh, man. Yeah, and on the fourth kick, because uh, because uh, Peter Jackson told him, kick the helmet towards the camera. So first take, he kicks it. It kind of goes by the camera. He does the yell, and it's like, okay, that's something. He kicks the helmet again a little bit closer. I, you know, same thing. But uh, yeah, and then there yeah, we saw there where he was underneath the horse, hands unbound, and he rolls away. His hands are bound, and his hands are bound again. And Aragorn is apparently very, very good at tracking because he can see what happened, even though there's been probably thousands of footprints on top of it. And, He's and a great horse, tracker. yeah. He, this is why he was a ranger for like eighty years. He can read track. Yeah. Uh, he's 87 years old, so yeah. <laughs> but still, I don't, I don't know how good the tracks would be. But still, but hey, I it, it does work for the movie. I kind of almost feel like what should happen. I feel like it, running under a horse like that. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't do that. I would not do that. I don't know if I. You'd have to be very small, but yeah, you just see he's seeing all these footprints, and he's like, some footprints don't add up. So he's like, okay, that must be their follow, and that's why they lose the belt because this guy's. Like, Grab the ball and kind of, yeah. 
And where do they happen to run? The only place they it's can the part, run to. Yeah, it's like the, the part that gets me is like the tracks lead away from the battle. Really? Where else are they going to go? <laughs> yeah. And here. Uh, Bangwon Forest, part of... The, oh, the, oh, they got a sweet toy. Yeah, Bangorn Forest is... You guys are insane, you know that, dogs? Just her. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Puppy. She's only two. Yeah, fair enough. So... She's trying to get Bash to play with her, but he's tired out from the walk. Yeah. She has boundless energy. Fair enough. Uh-oh. It's like, there's still one left. I mean, granted, it's never explicitly said to told to the hobbits that they can, you know, you know, hide under the cloaks; so they won't be seen. But it's like it is kind of a thing of like, you know, just you know, curl up in the cloaks; so you will be fine. I mean, the they're at least green and it's decent yeah. camouflage in the forest. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. I mean, granted, it's also in the books that hobbits are very good at remaining unseen, almost as good as elves are. Right. So. I mean that. I mean, it's explicitly said that hobbits exist in the real world today. It's just you don't see them because they're so good at remaining unseen. And here, uh, yeah, ah, gosh, ow, <laughs> kicked her in the nose like that would really hurt. And here, it's like, uh, who woke up now? I do like the you know the tree. The tree yeah. have eyes. <laughs> Yeah, um, and also John Rice Davies voices tree here. Does he? Yep. He is an all star in these movies. I mean, what, once we hear the voice, you can tell. But and here's like, the orc's like, what are you looking at? And, Ow. <laughs> yeah. I don't think you're outrunning a tree that can step no, as far as you can run. Legs are yeah. like 10 hobbits. Yeah. Listen, to the, listen to the voice. Yeah, I never noticed that was John. Yeah, Ray that's John Rice Davies voicing him. Uh, John Rice Davies is not doing like the whole motion capture like Smeagol does, like uh, Andy Serkis did for Smeagol. But yeah, he's voicing this, and it's like, dude, you're insane. Granted, John Rice Davies was, except for Ian McKellen, was probably like the biggest name actor they had in this, even though he's not because he was in uh, not um, Slider. No, what whatever show that was where they're just like jumping from universe to universe to universe. I don't remember a show. I want to say Sliders, but I can't remember. I don't know. Yeah. I just know John Reese Davies from Indiana Jones. Yep, that too. But like I said, he was all he also voiced the King of Thieves and Aladdin the third one. He's he's an accomplished actor. The Aladdin he was, movie sequels are weird. So God sees his names to like voice the bad guys. The movies are so bad. Yeah. They didn't and unfortunately um Robin Williams could not do the, did not do the second one because, no, because of reason. Disney pissed him off. But he didn't do the third one. They made it up to him. They yeah. Him they pissed him off in the second one, but for the They apologized profusely. Yeah. To get him back for the they one. were it was bas I want I was gonna basically point out it was basically like an on your knees yes. groveling they also left. Changed management, which yep. also helped. Mm -hmm. yeah, the new manager is the one that profusely apologized. Yep. Uh, but, but anyway. Do you remember why he was upset? I know the whole story. Now it's not the time we're watching Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, we're nerds. We, yeah. There's no apologizing yeah. for being nerds. We yeah, fair enough. Stay on topic. Yeah. Stay on topic. Stay on topic. I'll start up. And here, the white wizard. Uh, <laughs> I do like this. Um, they bend up to show the white hair. I I don't know. I think what the I think they got Ian McKellen, but I think they should have done is actually have Christopher Lee be standing there. It's not like you. I know. I know. From the back. I know, but it's just a, like I said, it's one it of those small still details. Look like yeah. Anyway. Well, I mean, it's still it's still an old guy with long white hair, so it could be to easier. Use Ian McKellen, but not have the audience know. Yeah. But still, like I said, it's just, yeah, <laughs> nice hobbit. <laughs> Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Is it a swamp of sadness? Good thing you don't have a horse with you. Hey, you told me to stay on topic. It is like a swamp. <laughs> it is a topic. I can make references that are relevant. You weren't relevant anymore with the Aladdin. I know. Um, but actually, this is kind of a swamp of sadness. They get into it later, but it's the dead marshes. They do describe the lights in the book, except the lights are not what we see. The lights are because they're like marching through it at night. The lights are basically little candle lights that they see out in the distance, not like the whites of their eyes that I think they kind of imply in this. 
Yeah. Yeah, I hate this play too quiet. It's a bog. What, again, I take that back. Bogs are actually pretty noisy considering all the insects and everything. Exactly, and that's why this yeah. is. Yeah, and here, it's like, yeah, Ed Gollum's like, hey, you got, yeah, you got food? Hey, can we have some? Would he actually eat the lamb spread, though? He, uh, he doesn't know what's Elvis bread. He doesn't know what's Elvis bread. He just knows it's bread. So, there it is. It's like, worm. <laughs> I think he actually, yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. It's, dude. If you get desperate enough, you do it. Too. Yeah, here. Yeah, Frodo stands him a little bit bread, and he's like, what? Yeah, it's like, because he doesn't know it's Elvis bread. He just thinks it's, you know, he just thinks it might be bread. He puts it in his mouth and it's like immediately yeah, gagging because, like I said, it, it burns his throat and everything. Yep. And that's what happens later on when they get the potatoes or the rabbits, I should say. Excuse me. You dog are insane. She's a dog. <laughs> yeah, I know. She's a dog. She's two years old. She's still a puppy. She likes to toy around. What are you doing, Bash? What was he doing? I don't know. <laughs> the dog was doing something. Sorry. He was trying to eat something on the couch. But yeah, and here. Weird. Yeah. Uh, this There's a scene in the book where Gollum's watching Frodo and Sam sleep and he's not I mean and he's just like I said like I said he's so so this is almost taken from the from the book of like I said Gollum's watching them sleep and like I said he hasn't experienced any warmth or kindness in any way except for Frodo so he's like you know so he's like you know just watching them sleep and he tries to reach out and touch Frodo's hand he's not trying to reach for the ring he's just trying to reach out and touch Frodo's hand but Sam just so happens to wake up and think he re- is reaching for the ring. I mean, I mean, mind you, Sam doesn't know. How could he know? But, but you know, but it's like you know, it's like the worst time you ever to wake up. And um, so he sees the golem and he's like, and he starts yelling at him, obviously, and it's just yeah, well, I mean, it's a that's thing. creepy yeah. anyway for someone to reach out and touch you. Like well, like sleeping. I said, like I said, he's he's never experienced any warmth or kindness before, so he's just you know. He's like, he, he, he is, yeah. Understand the boundaries. Yeah, he, yeah, he, yeah, yeah. He doesn't understand boundaries anymore. Yeah, I do agree. It is a little weird to reach out and touch someone when they're sleeping, especially if you are not in a like committed relationship with them. <laughs> yeah, the dead marshes. Yep. Uh, the battle was obviously the battle that we saw at the beginning of the fellowship, the last alliance. Yep. Um. I don't remember if the bodies are still there in the book or not, or if they've like decomposed, but I do remember like, you know, like I said, the lights are like little candle lights that you see out in the distance and you're, you can't follow them. Otherwise you will just fall into the water. Like kind of what happens here. There we see an elf, obviously an elf. You can tell by the armor. And now you guys, I do like the spooky of, just super spooky. The eyes open. And there he goes. And yeah, because it's kind of, I mean, they never explicitly say what happens if you fall in the water, but it's very much, like I said, don't follow lights because bad things happen. And here it's like the, it's almost like the pit in uh, uh, Hercules where they're just like all those swirling dead things. Yeah. 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 So. <laughs> And then Gollum is the one to pull him out. Because Gollum can move a lot easier through the Fagar marshes than Sam can. <laughs> yeah. And there. You saved me. Yeah. You're very much. He's like, don't follow the lights for the love of God. Yeah. I do like that look back. It's like, are you seriously that stupid? I li- what did I just say? <laughs> I think no, no. This is not the scene. Right? It might be. Bash. Play Why? nice, children. Yeah, this is okay. I forgot to mention something in the first movie, but I will get to it here in a bit. Um, but yeah, I do like in, in the book. It is like he just you know just holding and petting the ring almost. It's just like because like I said, the ring is getting a hold on him too, even. 
And it's just like, like I said, so he's just staring here, staring at it, all like petted and stuff like that. And then, There's somebody you can do about one. I know. <laughs> yeah, like Master should be resting. <laughs> and here, this is really where we see like Smeagol really start to take hold. Yep. Camp Colby Hart, Handy Bone, Colby Travers, far from home. <laughs> like I said, I know this is a poem. Sorry. <laughs> yep. I don't remember if that's a poem that was said by the old hobbits or if that's something that Gollum just wrote himself. And then here, right here, what does he call him? Smeagol. And you can see, like, look at the eyes. They changed to Smeagol's eyes. And what you call me? <laughs> Yeah, and he's like, because it's, it's been so long since someone called him by his own name. And like I said, it's, yeah, he's just like, you're treating me like a human. You're treating me as an equal. It's like Gollum's literally just, you know, it literally perplexes him. Because uh, Gollum almost turns back good. Almost. Not quite, but he is on the pathway. It's just, he kind of falls at the end. Wolf wide. There, the ring wraith screaming. Um, yep, they're still a thing. They're yeah. still after you. But the scream, that was done by one of the, um, I can't remember. I, I I know her name, and once I see the name, I'll know it. Um, but, uh, because it's very hard to get someone to scream in absolute terror in acting. And I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure anybody who's ever watched, like, fan movies, it's very hard to get someone. Or um, a prime example is um, the Abridged Works of Shakespeare, if anybody's watched that. Where they have a woman, you know, scream, and it's like it's very hard to get someone to scream in absolute terror. Yet the the woman that it's it wasn't an actress; it was one of the production ladies. So they just had her they go send her into a room and just her screaming over and over and over again, and they digitally altered it to make the Nazgul screaming. <laughs> yeah, and it's like yeah, it's like it's on wings. Yeah, yep. sucks. Yeah. And yes, oh, the, did all the horses die in the water? Yeah, they could get more horses, but now, but at this point, Sauron's like, "Well, I'm just gonna say it's like secrecy is no longer an option, really. So send them out on the last fastest thing we could possibly get, which are the fell beasts, which are not dragons. I don't remember exactly what they are, but they do fly. And there, look how big its wings are." The reason its wings are so big is for a creature that size to be able to fly, its wings would have to be that big. <laughs> it's something that always gets me about like the monster movies we see, like like um uh, the Godzilla most recently, most recently is you got creatures. The wings are positively tiny. There's no way those wings could provide enough lift. There, orc blood because apparently Gimli knows what orc blood tastes like. Um, I have questions. I have questions <laughs> as well. Yeah. Maybe it's one of those things where he read in a book about what orc blood tastes like. Maybe I don't know, but yeah, but yeah, he finds it, tastes it, and he's like he knows what it is. So yeah, like I said, I why are there you are tasting questions. strange substances yeah. anyway? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, word of advice. Don't if you're if you're in the wild, don't go licking up any strange liquid. Don't drink cactus juice. Don't, yeah. And be careful what mushrooms you eat is another great example. Yeah, you dogs are crazy. <laughs> and there, the trees are speaking. This is actually said about the old forest in the Fellowship of the Ring, and the old forest is the forest on the bounds of the Shire. Um, it's not said in this, but it, they do. But hey, they gotta pay reference to it somehow, because <laughs> apparently, because that's because um, I'll get to that later, I guess. Um, <laughs> what do trees have? To... You have to talk about. Yeah, it's the a squirrel dropping. <laughs> yeah, they're trees. They talk about stuff. They talk about the weather. I'm sure. Yep. Oh yeah. And here, there's something out there. What do you see? The white wizard approaches. Yeah, May's like, yep, yeah, it's that way. So, okay, everybody get ready. Yeah, and they, this is a little thing of they, they explicitly said Saruman's main power is his voice. He can make you, you know, he can say, do something, and you'll think it's a, it was, and you'll think it was a good idea, and that was your idea, basically. So, I like how they think they can take out a wizard. That's cute. Yeah, well, what else are you going to do? 
Yeah, big blinding light, shoot oh, the air. Wow. I, you know, props to Gimli for like being yeah. like throwing his. Oh, I thought he threw his axe. He threw a smaller axe. He has okay. he has a bunch of throwing axes. I was like, damn, Gimli was on top of shit. Yeah, well, he does have like you see one axe on his back there. He's holding I know, but he let his axe before mm -hmm. like was to get a yeah could get the shot off. Even though air, even though the arrow was already notched. The subtitles are on point with keeping up the suspense and just calling yeah. him the White Wizard. Mm -hmm. Uh, and and if you actually listen, you hear you hear Dan, you hear both Ian McCallum and Christopher Lee's voice speaking these lines to keep up the suspense until he steps out of the light. And hello, Gandalf got promoted. <laughs> it's like I said, it's the whole thing of I told you guys not to fight the Balrog so I could get all the XP and level up. <laughs> so yeah, and there, this is also from the book of. Yeah, or yeah, I am Saruman, or Saruman as he should be. Um, but I, I also want to point out, you see, he makes Aragorn's sword glow, like get really hot. So that's why Aragorn has to drop it. It's like, hey, um, if you could do that, it'd be kind of nice if you could do that to like all the orc swords. But um, maybe that's too much power. Yeah. No, but um, but here. How did they end up on top of the? The it, they in the books it is explained that Gandalf fall, you know, fall fought the Balrog from the lowest pit, they find what's called the Endless Stair, which is goes from the lowest pit up to the highest peak, and they literally fight all the way up. The, they fight for, I think it was three days. They fight okay, until, right. until yeah, until Gandalf manages to kill the Balrog and throws and throws, in, and throws him in ruin and, smite, and smites the mountainside. I think is what it says. I can't remember the exact quote, excuse me. Um, but yeah, and... It's one of those things where he like goes into detail, like there are older, fouler things that gnaw at the earth, and you know they're nameless things. It's, it's a whole thing, and it also raises the question of what are the nameless things. But anyway, so Gandalf regenerated. Yep. Just like the doctor. Mm -hmm. But yeah, but it's like, <laughs> and notice he's a uh, shirtless here. Apparently, <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, granted, you never, it's only shows like his, you know, a little bit, but it's like, he's not, he was wearing a cloak when he died, but he was, yeah. Yeah, here. I feel like an Obi-Wan moment. Yeah. I have not heard that name in a very long time. Yep. Yeah. Of course I know him, it's me. But, um, but uh, what, how he, how he got his, extra because he's actually wearing his gray cloak, because he's like, because his body is still there. He's just sent back to it. Because like I said, he's a spirit. So the spirit is sent back to the body. The body is healed. And then he goes to Lorien. And then Galadriel gives him the white robes as well as the new staff. Because if you remember, his, he broke his staff on the bridge, smiting it. Yeah, yeah, her. Edoras? Oh, it's just right over here. You're fine. <laughs> yeah. It's a magical forest. Come on, yeah. Gimli. They found the did they? I don't know. They did not find the hobbits. They didn't, they didn't find the hobbits yet. No, the hobbits stay with the Ents for a while. Yep. And here. <laughs> I do like the. He's like, he's bad mouthing the forest and the trees start growling at him. He's like, yeah, quite charming. Quite charming. I mean, <laughs> he also have a yeah. <laughs> yeah, here he's like, your great power has been sitting here for many long years. In the mountains. Thank you. You still freaking you speak in, you still speak in riddles. <laughs> and that's pretty much right from the I book. Like how they're like, it's been like a week since you died and came back, and yet they're like, oh my god, it's been so. Long. I mean, they thought he was dead. Yeah. So it would be like meeting yeah. up with a friend mm -hmm. you haven't seen in forever. You thought yeah. he was dead. Yeah. Your trees. Yeah. <laughs> He's <laughs> just Ghibli's still all paranoid about it. Because I mean, remember, the dwarves are not big fans of wood. They don't like the forest. They like to live underground. Sleeper. Yeah. <laughs> and here we get introduced to Shadowfax, the Lord of all horses. Um, in the books, I don't remember exactly how it works, but Shadowfax is. That is a glorious horse. Yeah, that, that is an amazingly good horse. I mean, that's like a horse I would buy you, and just, and I have a feeling you'd love. It, but anyway, yeah, but yeah, the mares are like some like some special horse. They're like the eagles. They're like they're not. 
they're not as powerful as the eels are, but they're like a very spe- they're like unicorns, I guess is the best way to say it. They don't actually have horns, but they're very special. They can run and not feel tired. They're amazing horses. So do they shine? Are they holographic? No. Damn, that would be cool. <laughs> I do like how he says shadow facts and the horse kind of bows his head like, yep, that's me. <laughs> yeah. um, Treat me with respect, motherfucker. Yeah, very much. Um, I, I, Gandalf's supposed to be riding bareback, but if you actually look closely, you can see that Gandalf actually is obviously wearing um, a saddle. I do have to forgive them, though, because as we mentioned before, it is so very hard to get insurance for actors who are not riding with a saddle. So... It's one of those things of, you know, he should be riding bareback, but like I said, it is a borderline impossible to get insurance for that. So, and here, yeah, Tree Beard, Tree Beard is just going off on all the poetry he's written and heard of, and it's just boring the hobbits to death. Don't be yeah. lazy. He says that a lot. But, uh, He's, but the as the ends are very much like trees, so everything they, they you know everything they do is slow motion basically. But uh, um, they make a point of it later where they're having the end meeting of you know it's it's nightfall. We just finished. It's like we've been here since noon. It's nightfall now. We've just finished introducing ourselves. We've just finished yeah. saying hello. Yeah. Yeah. And a part of that is because end end names are not like human names. Their names are very much. Um, like the old pharaoh names of they was like they list out the things you have done so like um i can't, I can't think of top uh, an example off the top of my head but it's like the conqueror of rome the you know the, like i said they're just li- they list off all the deeds you had accomplished in your name and that's how the end speak so whenever they say hello it's very much oh you are the Son of Root and blah, 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 blah. It's a long, complex name. And like I said, he's just kind of, and yeah, the four hobbits are passed out. <laughs> and he only just realizes, like, oh, oops, more of them. It's like, yeah, I forgot that only ends, per, like, only ends in trees, like my things. Oh, sleep, little Charlings. Uh, he takes them to a house in the, um, or a, a building of some sort, but I can't remember what it is i have business in the forest i don't yeah many to call so yeah he goes out to call all the ends so yeah he's going to all the ends to be like okay we're going to be having meetings now so <laughs> do we see the moon in this now well, we could we, we get a nice light that is obviously the moon light. This is probably a set. Yeah, they are. Because uh, I don't think you could actually get such well lighting at night unless they have like a big spotlight. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the thing about Sauron is he always feels fear. He's paranoid about it. That's why he actually very rarely ever goes in direct conflict. The only time he actually... Let's, yeah, the only time he ever goes in direct conflict is when he's forced to in the Battle of the Last Alliance. Because he's he's very much a coward. He does not want to fight. Now, if anybody mentions Numenor, I can answer that later. But like I said, we'd be here forever if I mentioned it now. So let's move on. <laughs> yeah, and there it's there's like Rohan is Rohan's not weak, but it's just it's my it's the leader's been corrupted, which makes it weak. So and as anybody knows, that's pretty much how all civilizations fall, is they fall from the top and crumble down. One, I mean, that's how Rome fell. Weak leaders lead to weak kingdoms. So, yeah. And here. Yeah, that we seek to destroy it has not yet entered their darkest dreams. Sauron literally could not, con- could, he couldn't even be, there's no way you could convince them that you wanted to destroy the ring. Because Sauron, Sauron, Sauron is very arrogant in that he thinks that everybody else thinks like him. So he, they think that everybody else wants to claim the ring and like destroy it. So he's like, yeah, who would want to destroy this much power? He never, yeah, it he never crosses that, his even mind. Even if somebody were to think that, that they'd get corrupted before they would be able to succeed. Yeah, yeah, that too. 
So yeah, he it, it's never in his mind that this could happen. That's why he doesn't have any. That's why he doesn't do anything to defend against it. Yeah. I mean, the what the one way he's like, okay, well, I know they have the ring, so how I'm gonna get it now is I'm just gonna blitz. I'm just gonna blitz Creed fourth. I'm not gonna do the long patient game that I was because they have the ring. I know they have the ring, so in order to get it, I'm just gonna blitz Creed fourth, kill them all as fast as I can, and then I'll find the ring. Yeah, here. They come across the Black Gate, which was actually built by Gondor after the Last Alliance because um, they were like, well, we don't want Sar Sauron to take his lands again. So they built the Black, Black Gate to keep an eye on everything. But a plague hit and literally just, you know, because the plague hit, so many people died. They just didn't have the manpower to keep up the fortifications in in the Black Gate and in Minas Ethel, which became becomes Minas, Minas Mortal, excuse me. Um, and yeah, so and here, the Easterlings yelling. This is straight from the book of Sam. Sam and Mary are like, "Who are these guys going to attack the Black Gate?" But then they start hearing the horns, and it's like, "Wait, these are not challenge horns. These are like welcoming horns." And yeah, and then the Black Gate just opens, lets them all in. And uh, this, I don't think this is the most practical way to open the gate, but hey, why not? <laughs> of having two giant mountain trolls, because those are too big to be cave trolls, they're mountain trolls, and they just can open the entire freaking... Yeah. Otherwise, you would need a lot more men to do it. Yeah. I don't think that beam would be strong enough to provide enough force to push that big of a of an object open. Yeah, you think they can just walk through the gate? Yeah, that well, that is kind of what the, that is kind of how they say it. it's like, okay, we're gonna just have to go down, try to follow the army in and hope to God we can remain hidden in there. Yeah, and well it's but I mean until Gollum comes up and it's like, hey, by the way <laughs> But here. It's like he sees the stones falling, so it's like what? Although I think this extra is actually a woman. Actually, now I think about it, it. Did look like a woman. I can't remember because a lot of the a lot of the extras they use in this are women, especially like during the last, and like especially in the battle scenes, and especially in the last battle, a lot of the extras are women. So I think I these I think these two might be women. I can't say for certain, obviously, but here we get a good scene of hide under the cape, and it just looks like you're a random rock, and because apparently she didn't see you when you were not under the cape, but hey, why not? We'll just right, go with it. Like, <laughs> they're right next to you. Yeah, they were... And it looked like they had just thrown the cloak over. Yeah. So, but, yeah, it just, I do like that scene of it. Just, you look down. But yeah, like I said, I think, I think those are... Does look yeah. Feminine. So, like I said, we can't confirm. They're obviously wearing masks. But yeah, it's like, I think you should probably stay under that a little bit longer than what you do. But hey, but I do like the shots of it looks just like a rock. And I mean, well, it's not just like a rock, but it's close enough to a rock that you could, you know, that you wouldn't notice it at first glance. Although, how did Sam get buried up to his waist? I'm not sure. Because the loose rock fell around him with him. <laughs> and here. But yeah, they are in the books. They are about to just, you know, sprint in after them and just hope they could, God, they could like hide with the army. But then Smeagol's like, no, there's another way. We don't have to go this way. He doesn't tell them about Shelob, but he's like, there is another way I can take you in. I mean, he half hopes that Shelob kills him so mm -hmm. he can take the ring back. Well, I mean, Smeagol. Smeagol, because at this point, Smeagol's like, well, we, I'm not going to betray you. And Gollum's like, yes, I will. Um, so Smeagol's hoping that they could, like, maybe find a way around Sheila. Because, I mean, he can get around her pretty easily. So he's like, maybe I can get these two around her. But it only happens later. Like I said, there's that scene of where he, like, trying to reach out to touch Frodo. That's where he's like, okay... These are, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to protect them. So I'm just going to lead them directly into Sheila and let her eat them. And then I can take the ring back. Yeah. Up some stairs. Some um, stairs. Yeah. Major understatement. <laughs> Spoiler alert. There are a lot of stairs and they're, they're vertical. They're, this is not, this is not like your normal staircase in a house. It is like rock climbing stairs. Yep. Yep.
So, yeah. It's a good smeagol, always helps. It's <laughs> not bad smeagol, bad smeagol doesn't always help. Yeah. Oh, shit. These are really good. Good. Yeah. I don't like any birds, though. No. I'd offer you one then, but hey. Nope. <laughs> and here. Drinking the end drought. Makes them taller. Yep. No, it's, it's supposedly said that they're the tallest hobbits to ever exist because of the end drought that oh. they drink. Yeah. There's a nice little reference in the background there. You can see a tree with gold leaves and a tree with silver leaves. That's a reference to anybody who's read the Silmarillion. I will not go into it further. Yeah, you were sick. He's not sick anymore. Like I said, the end drought is very much it's yeah, yeah, I didn't give anything for Whip old Toby, which is the weed they smoke. The trees are talking. <laughs> I know he doesn't know that, but hey. <laughs> you just spoke tree. <laughs> and I don't remember if the end drought actually makes you speak Entish. I don't believe so. <laughs> yeah. And this is actual, it's like, uh, Mary is, Mary's been taller than Pippin. Mary's older than Pippin, so Mary's taller than Pippin. Um, so it's, it's like, how'd you get so tall in the book? But but Treebeard explains to them that it's like, no, drinking this will make you, or not Treebeard, but Gimli explains it to them later. Um, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, here. <laughs> here. This is a little too much of them going in on the comedy angle for these two, I think, but. And here, this actually happens in the uh, in the old forest where the tree literally tries to basically eat them. In the old forest, so tree literally, it opens itself up and basically tries to eat these two. And they're only rescued by Tom Bombadil. But like I said, they had to cut out Tom Bombadil. I honestly think they probably could cut this scene out too because it really doesn't add much into it. But yeah. Is this in the theatrical version? Nope. This I is not. This yeah. Is yeah. Like I said, this is one of the scenes where I think you could probably just be like, all right, just cut it. Uh, they only did it, like I said, as a reference to the, what happens in the Fellowship of the Ring book. But I, yeah. And that's literally exactly what Tom Bombadil says to the tree. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, like I said, that's 100% exactly what Tom Bombadil says to the tree as the tree is trying to eat Merry and Pippin. Um, it tries to drown um, Frodo because it, it pushes Frodo into a river and tries to hold him underneath until Sam stops it, but... Yeah, and then Tom Bobadil comes to the rescue. But yeah, and like I said, it, I really do think they've tried to just cut that scene. It just it doesn't really add anything. Why is this yeah. Yeah, there have been no endlings for many years because we don't know where the female ent are, which are called untwives. So, so Pippin. How, how do you just lose half your population? It's not really explained in the books either. Um, apparently, they just. Will you stop? We'll be. I guess they're like we're tired of having yeah. kids. Uh, no, but, but <laughs> <laughs> why not? <laughs> I know. I know having children is not easy, but. Um, but uh, but it is explained that the that they went and dive like stay somewhere else than the ends and uh, you know have children they get together. Um, so it, I think it's Pippin who says, you know, well the old forest outside the Shire is very odd and spooky. Maybe the antlers are there, so, and you know, tr and there's tree birds like, like I'm not gonna hope, but hey, if you see them, 
let us know. Because, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, the, the ants are still human, or not human, but the ants are still very much guys. Let's really like that, that, that. So, yeah. And you can clearly see the saddle if you, if you were to look, but yeah. And yes, Rohan is all about their horses and Yeah, they said that they were the horse mm-hmm. masters. Yep. And it's very they're very much um Gallic influenced from the writings. Because the, that's what the Gauls were. They were horse masters. And the Romans just had a hell of a time dealing with them because they were so good on horses. Did his son just die or was dying? Uh, I didn't I didn't see. I think he's dead. Yeah, he's dead at this point. Um yeah. <laughs> yep. He's dead, unfortunately. And yeah, that's her cousin. I mean, they were very close. Yeah, and he's just yeah. And here, uh, this. I'm sorry. This is creepy as all hell. Uh, how would you not know? Wouldn't you have like someone watching over him at all times? Yeah, like if badly was... injured, right? You'd think you'd have a nurse with him at all times to be like, okay, maybe he wakes up, maybe you know something. But yeah, and here it's like, yeah, yeah, she knows her brother didn't desert him. She knows you banished his brother, her brother. But gosh, this is so creepy. I'm sorry, uh, women, if any guy speaks to you in this type of manner and doing exactly what he's doing, I give you full permission to slap him <laughs> because this is just creepy. No shit. Who that's what, what we do anyway. Yeah. No, that's something, that's something that always gets me. It's like, who lets someone walk around them when they're speaking to them? Because that's, that's something we see in movies all the time. But I don't think it's ever a thing where you're going to no, let someone walk I don't walk think people behind. actually walk around yeah. others. Like, because that's just awkward, right? Yeah. Like, social whatever has yeah, you, like, talking weird. to yeah. your face. Mm-hmm. She's too scared to do anything. That's real life. Yeah. Yep. Words of Poison. That's straight from the book. He's His name's Worm Tongue, and he's, defi- and he's defined, he's very much defined as a snake. I mean, Gandalf even says, keep your fork torque forked tongue behind your teeth where it belongs. Yeah. There's I do have one scene I look forward to getting to when we do the Return of the King with him, but and here, this was not scripted, this part coming here, where the flag just rips off. It's just it just happened. It's like that flows so beautifully that the camera, the camera guy. I think, right, that's yeah. the kind of crap. If you want it, like yeah. if that was supposed to be the shot, yeah, it'd be CGI. Yeah, and then here where the they had to they had to make the flag drop here, obviously, because the it was just the flag blowing away that was the. I know, but again, like that was yeah. that was a nice mm-hmm. shot. Yeah, and it, just, it was just one hundred by it was one hundred percent by chance. It, they nice. did not. It was not planned. And here they made Edoras on. They, they, you'll notice they have mountains on two sides. Uh, so the problem with this set that they're on, it got so incredibly windy. I mean, you saw it there with the wind. I mean, it's not so windy here, but you saw it and it was standing out, just the, just the wind blowing your hair horribly. It was just so windy. I mean, people go through great lengths to, like, yeah. replicate that on a set. Yeah. Oh, Gimli. Yep. <laughs> and there she's gone. She's a ninja. I mean, it's not like they yeah. teleported to the top. <laughs> yeah, gone. I know. I know. It's just, it's just, it's just the way it's, it's just the way it looks. Exactly. But yeah, it is very much. Uh, it's like, oh, I looked up, she was there. I looked away, and I looked back, she was gone. Well, <laughs> whatever you, she was. You did. You looked away for a good amount of time. You will deprive an old man of my walking. Yeah, no, uh, but in the in the book, uh, Aragorn's like, you know, treat this sword with honor. You know, and Gimli's like, my axe will keep it company. <laughs> they have a whole line about, about how, you know, this sword needs to be treated well. And Gimli's like, you know, make sure my axe is treated well. <laughs> um, 
And then here, yeah, uh, you would not pardon old man with his walking stick because um, those guards actually think Gandalf is an old man. They don't actually know he's a wizard <laughs> because Gandalf hasn't really been. Grima knew. Yeah. That's why he told them. To yeah, Grima knew. Grima knew. I mean, a lot of, I mean, like the higher ups knew, but a lot of the random soldiers didn't. So that's how it was so easy for them to be like, oh, yeah, he's just an old guy. And they really sell it because you'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Like any of these guys need yeah. weapons to take. Yeah, them. pretty much. And there, you can really, you can really clearly see uh, John Rice Davies' body double. There, you can see it was not him, which is why he was kind of turning his head around so you could, so it was harder to see. But yeah, oh, even there, you, <laughs> oh man. Oh my god, they've used a different serve name for mm -hmm. Gandalf. Like every time they've mentioned him in the past three minutes. Oh, he ate, he ate more. Oh, I have no doubt. It's just why. It's funny. Yeah, he uh, in the books he has like a, he has like an own, and you can make an entire fellowship of the names you give to Gandalf. Okay. Mithrandir, Stormcrow, Gray. Yeah, he's got There's so many names. Line, yep, like. mm -hmm. and straight from the books. That's a good line, though. Yep. Yeah, and here I did no, not pass through fire and death. Yeah, he ha he goes into a little bit more in the book. I don't remember exactly what it says though. So. And here, you'll notice only the corrupt people, though. Soldiers like, yeah, it's like, no, don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, no, don't get in the way. Yeah, because he, I mean, like I said, the higher ups know that Gandalf is good. It's just that Grima's corrupt, and they're like, no, this is a good thing. Don't do anything yeah, here. <laughs> he just like I said, and Grima is just such a coward. Mm -hmm. And then here, there are the so many. There the are power of Christ compels you. <laughs> no, but there are so many memes of you have no power here. <laughs> I love it so much. Yeah, and also we do gotta give a uh, props to Bernard Hill for being able to act corrupted and possessed so well. And then hell yeah, now. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, and uh, also Bernard Hill is also the captain of the Titanic. Anyway, <laughs> so anyway, sorry. And here, it, like is I said, she it, 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 for Uncle yeah, she she she, she doesn't know. Like... She knows he's sick, but she doesn't know what's going on. She just sees the guy pointing a stick at him. And he's being, you know, uh, she doesn't actually walk. I don't think she actually walks out in the book. I can't remember. Yeah, and here, yes, yeah, very much Saruman. They did what they do really well in these subtitles, um, but uh, in the if you actually listen, it is very much Chris Lee's. Ow, <laughs> I do love this little bit of detail. He looks at his face, got an indentation of a stab on his head. <laughs> yeah, and here. If I remember correctly, I think they had to shoot this four different times with him in each stage of makeup, and they just you know slowly they yeah, yeah they just the they best, go from yeah. the really sickly one to the healthy yeah. one, and his hair got immensely shorter all of a sudden. Right. <laughs> yeah. You can't really throw your son's dead. Yep, sorry. Like I said, he's been corrupted. He's been possessed for God knows how long. He hasn't been in his own thoughts for, like I said, probably six months at this point, if not longer. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I do like how he kind of stumbles up there and it manages to stand. Uh, one part is coming up here in a second. That always kind of gets me. Yeah. He thinks he's spent the last six months in a dream. But yeah, here where we see him draw his sword. <laughs> yeah, they, your fingers are also like that if they grasp your sword. I don't think that was from the book, but maybe. <laughs> but here. Also, look at the sword hilt. I love that. The horse heads. that love that so much. Yeah. Even though it would make more sense for the heads to be turned outward, that way you have a cross guard. But anyway, you look, 
you see, it's like, oh, he's looking at his sword. He's actually not looking at his sword. He has to look, because if he were to look at the sword, he'd go cross-eyed, which wouldn't really sell well. So he has to look past his sword and at something beyond. Otherwise, because like I said, otherwise you go cross-eyed and it just does not sell well. I mean, I remember in my, like, I remember trying to make movies in high school where we had that exact problem of, you know, the actress is trying to focus on something here. She's holding something here, but she's going cross-eyed. So what we always did is we got a laser pointer, pointed it somewhere there, and she'd look at the, the spot. <laughs> I don't think they did that in this, but <laughs> in there. <laughs> Probably should have just let him do it, but hey. Enough blood has been spilled on his account. And here. Um, it doesn't need to be said. Theoden does know who Aragorn is. Theoden knows that Aragorn is the rightful heir to... I mean, granted, they even say later in this movie that they they know each other personally. Yeah, oh, he's gone. And don't notice he's riding a black horse because black horses are apparently evil and white horses are good, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, obviously. That's how... <laughs> Like yeah, that, that's how movie shorthand works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like I said, he think he doesn't remember anything from like the past. Like I said, like six months, so he doesn't know his son's dead until now. And this is a really hard scene <laughs> to anybody who's ever lost anybody close, especially to parents who lost children. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I don't think Gandalf, Legos, and Gimli, and Aragorn would be in the... Uh, I guess Aragorn might be in the funeral procession, but yeah. I mean, they're special guests of honor. Yeah. Might um, and uh, you'll say that there are the all the tombs with the white flowers around. That's how they buried their kings. There are, um, I think, 17 graves outside the front of the, of the gates of Ered Edoras. And they're all former kings who have passed away. And yeah, <laughs> that's that's how they memorize, mem remember their kings. And yeah, now she starts chanting in Roh Rohirrim ancestral language. Uh, thank you, subtitles. <laughs> I don't remember. I know it's I know it's uh, translated in the books, but I cannot I could not tell you what it was. It's one of the few songs I don't know. The only parts that kind of get me there is you see, is you see um, Bernard Hill Theoden. He's looking on. He's just he's kind of stone faced almost. He doesn't really have emotion. But this is a good scene where he just totally breaks down. Yep. Yeah, and this is. Hard for Gandalf, too, because Gandalf's also a friend. You know, he's watched. I mean, he watched a lot of these kings grow old and die. So he's just like, damn, I knew these guys. I mean, so like I said last movie, this is exactly why elves are not meant for Middle Earth. They're meant for Valinor because everything here will wither and die. So no matter what they do, it's like, well, shit. That, like I said, it's like I made this awesome garden while it's dead. I forged this awesome sword while it rusted. It's just, so that's why they go to the Undying Lands. And yeah, here he just... Yeah, it totally breaks down. And it's very hard to be able to cry on command like this, I know. So, yeah, but it is... I think anybody really who's ever experienced loss really suffers watching this scene. Especially if you had someone really close pass away, but yeah. Although here, we don't we see the kids coming in the background, I think? Or is it... Or do we cut away? I can't remember. Because we're going to see the kids from the beginning of the movie here in a second. And Gandalf is also a master of tongues because he knows the ancient Rohirrim language. I mean, too. he's been alive since it was still the spoken tongue, right? Of course he he's been alive since the... Well, he's been alive since before the Middle, since before Middle Earth existed. Exactly. So but he's only been on Middle Earth since the Third Age. And here we see... the Okay, there we see the kids. And this part gets me here. What happened to the boy that he all of a sudden just... 
like falls off. He's probably <laughs> tired and hungry and hasn't eaten because they've been on yeah, horseback fair enough. for how long. How his sister was able to hold on then, I don't know. But Maybe yeah. he was giving her all the food. So that ah, that's happen. a good point. It, just, it was just so tired. That's a good point. So, but yeah, in here. <laughs> Again, notice Gimli, just 100%. I'm eating everything. I'm very hungry. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. I know. I mean, yeah, he, you're a trusted advisor, but don't. I don't think it's just 2000. I think it's, I can't remember off the top of my head, actually. You can send out writers. But yeah, um, in the book, what he does is he leaves the women and children here in Edoras, and then he actually does ride out. Um, it just so happens that they just kind of get cornered in Helm's Deep because that's like pretty much the only option they had. But he drew, he moved his army out to protect the women and children who stay in Edoras. Um, but in here, they're just, they cut it, they cut it out into detail, and it's like, yeah, in here. It's like, you know, yeah, you know he's also the king, you know, the rightful king of Gondor in here. <laughs> uh, yep. Yeah, uh, too much there, buddy. Yeah, here. Like I said, in the book, it's the women and children staying at Eris, and then only the army goes out, but... You know, you gotta add, you gotta add stakes somehow. So this is how they did it. I think Gandalf knows that there is a, and notice that uh, Shadowfax gets his own special stable. <laughs> Every other horse is in a smaller one, but um, Shadowfax gets a double apparently. <laughs> yep, there's another name for him. Yep, <laughs> and also straight from the book of I've walked for 300, 300, 300, ages of men, and I'm still, I'm only now. <laughs> Apparently, you're really good at timing this shit out. Right. <laughs> well, maybe he's got a little bit of a yeah. foresight. He is, you know, yeah. godlike. I guess he would have. Uh, he's not specifically listed as having foresight like um, like uh, Galadriel does. But it is. it would make sense that he does. Here we see Brego. Which in this was Theodrid's old horse. Um, but if I remember in the books, I think it, I think this is actually Aragorn's horse. I mean, he doesn't have it up till this point, but he, but it's a horse that Aragorn knows. And he, you know, as it's bait, like I said, it's almost his horse they grew up with. So although he didn't have, doesn't have it up until this point, it, you know, it just comes with him here, but I don't think, I don't think it's Aragorn's horse in the books, but I don't remember, but yeah. And here you can speak to it, calm it down. And this is exactly what you do with a horse to, you know, you don't look at it in its eye, don't look at, you know, look away and just try to slowly pet it, get it slowly gaining its trust. Don't try to force it. Especially, and by the way, wild horses, don't ever freaking approach because they will kick you and it hurts. Speaking yeah, because it, does, it doesn't say the translation, unfortunately. I, know. I unfortunately don't know what he says. I don't know the tongue that well. Yeah, it's like, why not? The ranges of the north are known to hang out with the elves a lot, so that's something that always kind of confused me. Yep. 
like turn him free. He's in enough war. It's like no, it's actually your horse, <laughs> but a or become in this and becomes your horse later. But hey, why not? <laughs> Because, uh, just because you think he's seen enough of war, of horse suicide, it has not. Well, there's a big plot point of it later in the third movie that I just love for the horse, but well, I guess it's not a plot point, but. Yeah, here he's like, oh, and we're going to hear, he's going to describe, it's like, you stink of horse. I wonder why! I just wrote that. <laughs> I, I come from a city full of horses and I stink of horse. Or, yeah, and I rode on horse. And here, yeah, yeah, was he from Gondor? And here's now Saruman's gonna figure out who it is. Yeah, the ring, the ring of Barahir, which was given to, um, well, which was given to Aragorn's ancestors by Finrod, if that means anything to anybody. Yep. <laughs> Grandal Greyham is another one. I think I've used that already. Was it though? Yeah. Yeah, he's like I think this is I think this is like him trying to comfort himself, not really. It's one of those things where it's like you hear was bad noise. Or did they just yeah. stop keeping good records? Yeah. No, it's just the way he's speaking is very much like I'm try he's comforting himself. He's trying to convince himself, not really. Which is always fun if you ever have if you ever get the chance to listen to someone talking like that, it's kind of hilarious. <laughs> Cause it's just like they because it's like, oh, that's probably nothing. It's probably just, it's, it's so funny. Oh, here we go, good scene. Although, do not put your hand beside the blade when you wield it like this. Because it would be so easy for you to slip and slice your hand. Keep your hand on the hilt like that. There you go. That's much better. Grand, that sword's about a, a hand and a half sword, it looks like. It's not... <laughs> She's good. <laughs> Although, don't ever block a sword with the blade like he did there, because that would just put chink in both the swords, even if they weren't swinging that hard. You want to blo block it with the flat of the blade. Yep, this is said straight from the book. <laughs> Yeah, your daughter kings. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she as the thing for Aragorn so bad. <laughs> he understands her. Yeah. <laughs> The only real problem I have with that is he's it's almost kind of like a lovesick teenager type thing of like Johnny looked at me, oh boy. I don't know. I'm not a teenager nor a girl anymore, so nor a girl anymore. Uh that was you know what I mean. Shut up. <laughs> I'm not a teenager anymore and I've never been a girl, so there, there yeah. I get tongue tied easily, I'm sorry. I am not a wordsmith. Great Fortress of Rohan, built by the Numenorians, and the, yeah. Um, unfortunately, the only thing I really don't like about Thelm's, oh my gosh, that guy's so old he needs a cart to ride on, jeez. Or he has a broken leg or something, yeah. like. Yeah, go for it. wheelchairs, Jacob. <laughs> and here, send out the more, why couldn't they just put him on a horse? Send out the war riders. Oh gosh, this uh, Andy Circus suffered for this scene because I think they shot it four times, um, and this this entire set was covered in snow before they did the shoot because it had snowed the day before. So that water is absolutely freezing, and poor, and poor old Andy Circus has to jump in the water to pretend to catch a fish like four times. 
It's like, oh my gosh, dude. There's a, there's dedication, then there's uh, Peter. Can we cut this? Because <laughs> I think this Peter, is another... did you get a good take yet? <laughs> yeah, this is this is another one. And uh, also, by the way, you can see he only has like uh, like maybe a hundred feet to be able to go because there's a, just it just goes over a waterfall, which you saw there. Um, so I'd be like, um, do you really need me to jump in this water to catch a fish? Do you, I mean, is there any way else we could get this scene? <laughs> in here i mean yeah you do need the scene like this to show that to show sam to show to show frodo becoming more you know harsh with sam becoming you know starting to you know his, his words become more venomous um but i still don't think you need to see Gollum jumping into the poor freezing water to try to catch a fish because yeah. Andy Serkis went through hell for that scene, and oh my gosh, having having been someone who's done polar bear swims, they are not fun, and there are people who do them for fun. They boggle my freaking mind. Yeah, you sound like him. <laughs> They're grasping the ring. Yeah. No, I don't see. No, the, okay. This is about the scene, like I said, in the in the books where, like I said, Gollum tries to reach out and touch Frodo. In this, it's just the ultimate debate of Gollum and Smeagol, I guess is the best way to say it. Although I do like, if you look at his eyes here, it's very, his eyes are very narrow. When they when he becomes Gollum, they're a lot kinder. And then, yeah, then they're, it's so, I love the, also the shifting angle Iron Girl. When it's uh, Smeagol, it's from the left here, but when it's Gollum, it goes to the right. I do love that, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, all that. a lot, though. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not listening. I'm not listening. It does remind me. Um, I had a nickname of Smeagol in high school, and the reason I got that is because I had, I had bronchitis, and I was just, and when I was in class, I'm just hacking, hacking, hack, coughing, coughing, coughing. And apparently I sounded like Gollum when he's hacking, that does that Gollum sound. So they started calling me Smeagol because of it. And mind you, this is right after this movie came out, so. Well, that would be the only way that, like, normal mm -hmm. high school kids would know that. Yeah. Because not everyone's reading The Lord of the Rings mm -hmm. to know some, like, something yeah. like that. No. So, like I said, it was, this was right after The Lord of the Rings Two Towers came out. And like I said, I was just I was just coughing, hacking up. Just like, like I said, I had bronchitis. And I was just coughing so bad in school. And they, and like I said, it just and someone says, "You sound like Smeagol," and the name stuck. So I had the name, had nickname of Smeagol all through high school. It never really bothered me though. So. I like that this bit here is like it, it's gone. <laughs> and they show up from like the the golem side, but he's still smeaking. Yeah, yeah. To like kind of but further to... prove that maybe golem is gone. Yep. <laughs> I do love this. Yep. Although here. In this part of the book is Sam really just just screws Gollum over in this part of the book because because Smeagol finds the rabbit and Sam, Sam's like oh hey could you also find like a bunch of fruits and vegetables blah blah and you know Gollum goes out and does it and then you know Sam makes a stew out of it which I mean which you know you which what you do is one of the very you know it's one of the very few ways you can make any get anything decent out of a rabbit and 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 it's me i just got him so pissed off it's like you could at least let me one to eat dude come on but uh, and then and this and sam's like you know all we need is a few good taters and straight from the book and fat um except in the book sam does offer he's like hey i could cook for you and then Gollum's just like no you i don't eat your food anymore yeah, here they don't. What's dangerous? <laughs> What's dangerous? Potatoes. Boil, Boil and mash them, stick them in stew. Boil and mash them. 
<laughs> yep. Oh man, so good. Yep. Yeah, but like I said, you know, in the book, Sam's like, hey, I could cook for you. And he's like trying to, you know, he's trying to, you know, help because he knows what Fro is trying to do. So he's like trying to, you know, hey, eat this food. But just Fro, just like Gollum hasn't eaten any real food like this in so long that, it, that Gollum doesn't even try it. And here, there is an entire poem about the Oliphants here that we see here in a second. And again, one of the few that I don't know. It's like Oliphant, big of as a house. Um, I can't remember. But they actually do, because in this, it kind of looks like they cut away and didn't actually eat the stew. No, they actually enjoy that. They eat the entire stew and enjoy it. Then they encounter the army, but. Yeah. Yeah. In the books, it's explicitly said that Sauron's calling all evil forces to him. So even even Gollum felt called to go to Gon to Gondor to go to Mordor. That's how he was captured in the first place. Right. So. So I think they kind of maybe mentioned that in the first. Ah, uh, they may have. I don't remember. Yeah, here Olivant. Like I said, there is an entire poem, and I guess I don't remember. And those are so much bigger than normal elephants, my gosh. Look how big they are. She's a cracker. They got entire freaking cities on their backs. Yeah. And there and it is explicitly said while they're eating the stew, they hear the you know, they hear these bird calls and Frodo's like or I think it's Sam who's like, those are not birds. It's like and Frodo's like it's someone trying to sound like birds. <laughs> and here we see the Ichthalian Rangers, which farm farm your leads, and yeah. <laughs> there we go. Yep. It was um you oh. originally tried to go for Boromir, right? The actor. Yeah, he yeah. He, uh the um oh frick, what's his name? Fuck me. Oh frick, what's his name? Because he was in uh, uh, Van Helsing after this. Yeah, was, was I, can't Van Helsing. I can't remember his name. But yeah, he originally tried to go for Boromir. But I apparently, apparently Peter, Peter, um, why do I want to say Peter Cushing? Peter Jackson was like, no, we are farmer. <laughs> Ow. And his speech is just so freaking. <laughs> yeah. David Wenham. Okay. Yeah. He just sounds creepy, though. He just has one of those voices that just. Yeah. And here, this this line is actually from Sam, where it's like, I wonder what his name was. You know, was he always evil? What's his family going to be like now that he's dead? Yeah, that actually it's actually Sam that says that in the book, but and also fake blood, uh, basically because fake that's pretty well cherry juice almost fake. Blood, I mean, real blood's not that bright red. In the books, um, they don't actually. I don't remember. I don't think they bind their hands, but it's just like they encounter them. Um, Faramir talks to him for a bit, and he's like, oh, okay, keep going. Yeah, he doesn't... Yeah, I was going to say, they didn't actually... Time have... for the second disc. Okay, cool. So... Uh, that's where the halfway point is. Yep. <laughs> Everybody take a stretch break real quick. <laughs> As... <laughs> that cat was so comfortable, and... Yeah. Was that Percy, I think? Yeah. Yeah, it's Percy. <laughs> it's just up there. Yeah. Welcome back. Well, I know. Percy's a good cat. I like her. <laughs> Like I said, everybody take a stretch break real quick while we get the second disc set up. Bear with us. Yeah. But yeah, by the way, I like, I actually really do like Marie's cats. They're good cats. They have not done any, well, 
one of her cats did bite me and the other one did kind of play bite me, but yeah, I like them. So they're not, they're not throwing up on my shoes or scratching me in any way. So, Hey, good cats. I know that's a big shock to everybody. <laughs> oh, lay down, lay down. Be good. There you go. Movie, you're, you're yeah, she's fine. Her. She's fine. If she, if she just sits down and just stays calm like this, it's all right. But she's she just gets more worked up, though. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. She gets amped up so easily. <laughs> oh, Bash is coming too. Yeah, it's all right. Hold on, guys. Bear with us. We're in there. <laughs> oh. Yes, hi dog. How are you? All right. Oh, sit down. Sit down. There you go. Those are gummy bears. You would not like gummy bears. Stop. Stop. I don't think you guys would like gummy bears. Oh. No. <laughs> um, I just got text message. That's funny. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're fine. So I put the desk. I said, yeah, I switched them. Oh, you did already? Yeah. Cool. So. No. My family's going all out because um, my cousin plays for a university of uh, Montana and they just positively creamed whoever they played last night. It was like uh, 57 to zero. <laughs> that was, yeah. So. That was a big yawn burger. Yep. Oh boy. All right. Okay, good. Everybody, go ahead. Get, if you're ready, like I said, everybody, go ahead. Feel free to take a stretch, just bathroom break, whatever you need, and get your second disc ready. And in, oh, no, wait, I, I forgot that. Wait, we got to turn subtitles on. Bear with us. Yeah. Forgot that. My bad. My bad. Hold on, I was like, accidentally make it a <laughs> Portuguese. <laughs> I like how the spoken language is like, you can have, well, you can listen to this in English or Portuguese. Like, who decided Portuguese was going to be one of the dubbed languages? I don't know. Not Spanish, not like Chinese or some other like yeah. widely spoken language. Yeah. I guess this movie's a big hit in Portugal and Brazil. Apparently. Not even, I don't know. Uh, but yeah. Right then? Yeah, okay. Uh, like I said, everybody feel free to go ahead and get your film pulled up just to ready. And in three, two, one, play. And if someone messaged me. Apparently, I say play really weird when I say play on this. Right, cool. Yeah, I don't know. I just I saw that message last night. I'm like, do I really? But I. Yeah, here, this is a major thing. Of okay, are there dwarf women? Uh, yes, dwarf women are a thing, and yes, they do have beards. <laughs> um, it doesn't need to be said. Dwarf women do have beards, so. Unfortunately, we don't see. I think we see a couple of. I think we see a couple of them fleeing in um, the Hobbit, but we don't see any dwarf women in this. Unfortunately, I think we should, but we there, see a lot of dwarves in this anyway. Though, do we? Yeah, no, not really. Exactly. So they don't go to any dwarf kingdoms, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Which, granted, there was only uh, two of at this time, and they're both way far north. That the you know that they just they're not going anywhere near. Yep. I mean, she had her brother. She was completely in yeah. the Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's one thing that we never get in the Lord of the Rings. That I think we should. I think they. I think the Rings of Power is doing it, but I'm not sure. Um, but we never see. Uh, here, <laughs> I do love this scene. It is kind of. 
it is kind of pointless into the grand scheme of things so i understand why they cut it from the theatrical edition but i do love it so much i'm like i made you some soup and she's like okay so yeah she gives aragorn some soup and you know yep takes a take a big old bite and you just see on his face oh god this is horrible <laughs> Yep. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, it's good. <laughs> it's clearly not. <laughs> I do love this bird here. It's like, okay, just going to go dump that out. And then, yeah, just, then just, yeah it startles him. <laughs> then here, but yeah, but that thing gold, my grandfather, you said you went to war with him. Yep. Like I said, Aragorn knows this thing at Theoden. He must be at least 60. Keep going. Seven. Yep. Keep going. He got higher. <laughs> 70? Nope. You cannot be 80. I'm 87. <laughs> he's like, I don't remember how, but he's like 200 years old when he passes away. I think, I don't remember the exact age, but yeah. Mm-hmm. The ranges of the north, those are all that's left of the Numenorians. I'm <laughs> yeah, I'm trying. You. you just scared the overly shit out of me. <laughs> now you're just going to sit there watching me eat. Yeah, now I got to eat all this. Let it, yeah, now they're going into Arwen, who, again, pretty much, she plays a part in the third book, but she's just. I don't know why they... Oh, okay, I take that back. I know why they do, but I, I kind of disagree with them going all out on her like they do here. Yep. I am trying to put some romance Yeah. In it. <laughs> uh, Uh, it's hard to say if this is a memory or not, or if this is actually just a dream, but yeah. Because, I mean, you could e easily argue that this is just him having a memory of the night before he left Rivendell, but right. still. <coughs> that bed would not be that good. Oh, I'll take that back, maybe. Because it almost looked like he was in a, like a little tiny bed. That that's why his knee was bent up like that. But he's not. He's just, no, it's just yeah. yeah, it's big enough. Yeah, it's just how it, it was, was just just from the way it was. It just from the angle it showed. But yeah. But this is why I say you could this you could argue this is that this is a flashback because of what they're saying here. You know, you must go with Rogo. That is your path. Blah blah blah. <laughs> Yeah, like I said, in the in the movies, they go like, "Oh, does Aragorn is actually going to become the king?" He's very reluctant to become the king. In the in the books, he's very much, "No, I'm going to become the king." <laughs> Although they said there, it just on the subtitles, it just said, "Speaking in Elvish, Arwen." No, speaking <laughs> yeah. in English, Arwen. Oh, did it say English? Yeah. I thought it said Elvish. It's like, but it's, but he just said Arwen. It, it's Elvish it, English. It's they, the same damn word. I know, but I think they specified it was spoken in English because it didn't have the subtitles that they were giving all the Elvish words. Uh, uh, yeah, good point. But you're right. That word's... Because I thought the same thing. I'm like, it's the same in either language. Yeah. Does it matter what language she's speaking to say her name? Yep. But I think it was just acknowledging the lack of yeah. like, subtitles, the Elvish words. Yeah, have. that's a good point. Yeah, you're probably right. Yep. They're reminding the audience that he loves yeah. Arwen as Eowyn trying yeah, to... Yeah, as Eowyn's Arwen. trying her best. Uh, <laughs> hey, I'm right here. <laughs> remember, guys, remember, audience, he's not responding well to her because Word he already loves someone else. Yep. <laughs> as Ar as Eowyn's pretty much throwing herself at him. and I mean, maybe that's a bad word, but you know what I mean.
in here. Yeah. Uh, in the books, it's not so much um, Elrond kind of it kind of sets up the task. I mean, the reason Aragorn's so much of like, yeah, I'm going to become king is because um, Elrond basically says you can only marry my you can only marry Arwen if you become king. So he's like, okay, you got my, you know, <laughs> thanks for having my, thanks for having my back. <laughs> um, but it's also it's also um, a callback to um, the tale of Baron and Luthien. When Baron is when Baron asks, you know, uh, uh, Th uh, Thingol if he can marry Luthien, you know, he's like, only if you get me a Silmaril. So what's he do? All right, I will get you a Silmaril, and he does get him a Silmaril. <laughs> Unfortunately, his hand is eaten with it, but hey, <laughs> yep. I think I think she would know why he's saying this. Oh, no, I, so she she understands, but, like, they're in love, and she's yeah. like, I thought you wanted, you loved me, and you want to be with me. Yeah. Like, I, I already know the situation, and I know you don't believe that, like, you yeah. don't believe that. I, it's just, when she says, why are you saying this, I almost feel like she should be like, did my father tell you to say this? Like, kind of like they did in, uh, well, that's what she's yeah. At. yeah, now she's, now she's going at it, now she's saying it, but. Uh, also, the jewel is not what gives her immortality. The jewel is just a jewel. Um, but uh, it's just symbolic of her. Yeah, yeah. There you immortality. go. Immortality. Yeah. Um, it's because it's it's a symbol of her love to him. Yeah, yeah. There you go. You said it best. But uh, in this, they kind of they almost make it feel like Arwen's like Arwen's some like goddess who's like doing her best to keep Sauron at bay. And as Sauron grows and straight, that's kind of how it, they almost plays in these movies, unfortunately, because I mean, it, I mean, especially in the third one, you really get a sense of that when, um, when Elrond talks to Aragorn, but it almost, yeah. Oh, here we go. Creepy wolf. Wargs. Ouch. Yeah. The CGI. Uh, yeah. This CGI doesn't really sell. Oh yeah. Those would suck. Ow. <laughs> It just throws his body away like that. And here, go. Here we go. Legolas. Legolas to CGI arrows. Yep. And here, roar, slices it off. <laughs> Why don't you have scouts? Right. Uh, or maybe that's what those two ahead were supposed I to. I think be? you'd want to be farther ahead than this, but hey. No, you're <laughs> also, that's a terrible. Me that's a terrible scout if the scout was seen and he tried to attack. Yeah. That's not what scouts do. They come they back stay and hidden and they count your people mm -hmm. and they report back. Thank you. Although I do love I do love Gimli here. Of like I mean, because earlier we saw him fall off the horses and it's like, oh, that was deliberate. I think and also there, that little cut they had where you see Layla standing in the foreground, you see a bunch of wars coming in the background. I think they should have put that at a longer range than what it was. Probably. So because I mean, because if they were that close already, the, they'd be on top of them by now. Erwin, you're in a hard spot. You know you want to fight. Yeah. But you're literally all the people have. Is the yeah, you guys. you're literally all I got to to get. <laughs> so, but yeah, here it's like it's like trying to get the horses out of anyone. <laughs> Although the scene we see here um, also should be mentioned. Aragorn's obviously very good on a horse because apparently he spent almost all his free time riding horses while uh, while shooting these films. Which I mean, apparently, like I said, I know he loves horses. Uh, do we get? Did, to he, the... did he? Is it this movie or was it Hidalgo where he uh, like bought the horse after the film? This was this movie. Okay. Uh, yeah, here we go. We get to see Superman Legolas. Yeah. Good luck getting this to work. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Um, I was gonna get to that in the. One of the horses, I think it's this white one he's riding, uh, the white one he was riding earlier. Um, but, uh, or not the white one, uh, the, I guess that is Hospital that he's riding now. Uh, I think it's this horse that he was riding. The, one of the, the trainers, well, I mean, it was her, her horse, Cody Cody, not really. Um, but she was the one who was always taking care of it, and she just absolutely fell in love with this horse. So after they were done filming, she was like, okay, I'm going to buy this horse. She just absolutely loved it. 
And then she, you know, she, she went to order to the owner is like, Hey, can I buy this horse? It's like, and he's like, Oh, I already sold it. And she's just apparently heartbroken. And then like later that day, apparently Beagle Mortensen's like, Hey, I bought you this horse. <laughs> and it's like, and uh, I could, cause uh, uh, Beagle Mortensen didn't just buy that one horse. I think he bought three in the course of this movie. <laughs> cause like I said, he loves horses uh, and this, <laughs> Oh no, not, not there yet. There's one scene coming up that I absolutely just love of Theoden, where it's just, I don't think that would work, but I love it so much because it's just on oh, this here. It's like, okay, I'm going to stab you. No, I'll break your neck. <laughs> yeah, don't, that, that's why you don't come up and mug, you slash. Don't, don't just, although this part here. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> I love, I love the eyes. <laughs> Ow. Ow. Ow, yeah. Good luck getting out of that, buddy. Yeah, okay. I think it's this part. Yeah. Yeah, shows the sword right. I don't think that would actually stop the horse from moving forward. I think it's just the sword's going into its neck now. Yeah, but... yeah that's dumb. I mean, it would still move. Because the lightsaber would keep it moving. Yeah. So, like I said, I love it for how absurd it is, but it's, I don't think it makes sense. But yeah, here. Um, oh, gosh, that's CGI. Cause he was, cause he's wearing green in the, he's wearing green in the shots, but he was totally brown there. <laughs> yeah. Um, in the books, he doesn't actually go over the cliff like this. I don't know. I honestly don't really. I guess it's just for the added drama, but it does. also, uh, there's no way a wild animal is just gonna run straight off a cliff like that. Unless it was dying. It would have to be in yeah. such. It would have to be in such a panic that something's pushing it forward. Yeah. Maybe he was panicked from the thing that was stuck on its side. Yeah. Well, I mean, you could argue because you see the it kind of like trying to bite at Aragorn. Maybe it wasn't paying attention, but I, I don't. Oh gosh, look at that horse blood, fake horse blood. Obviously, not real horse blood. They did not kill or murder any animals in this movie. Good luck getting movies made when you actually do that, except for bugs. In which case, it doesn't. No one cares. Like it reminds me of Starship Troopers. They have that whole no animal was harmed in the making of this movie, and then you literally see children stomping on real life cockroaches later in the movie. <laughs> and it's like, okay, well, what, what's like, okay, hold on, where are we qualifying animal here? Because cockroaches are technically all animals, or is it just that they can't just give you these puppy dog guys and look at you all sad type thing? I don't think Peter cares about cockroaches. Yeah, well, I don't think anybody cares about cockroaches. <laughs> yeah, and there he goes. I do like uh, Gimli's saying there of like, tell me what happened, I'll ease your passing. That's, oh, that's something I didn't think of. I should probably, you know, sorry, I just had a moment. <laughs> uh, so, and yeah, here it's like, okay, go over the cliff. It Maybe he's holding it. Nope, he's gone. No, he is not there. Yep. Also, he waited a long time to check to see if he was holding on still. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, I mean, he may have been holding there. It's just you took too long and you let go. Yep. And unfortunately, I mean, that seems very heartless of Leave the Dead. Um, they're under pretty trick. They're, you know, they're under pretty strict time restraints. They don't have time to do the proper burial like they want to. So it's very much just, let's just go. We got to get out of here now. Yeah. No, it reminds me of the Battle of Carhe, uh, where the Romans were just in such a panic that they literally just left the wounded too, because they just, they just like, we got to go now. They were so panicked about it. Is this where we get the happy ending for the children, I think? Yep. Because <laughs> apparently a bunch of people have been staying there, or a bunch staying there already, because we see these people arriving. Eowyn comes in first, and yet it's already so full of refugees, it looks like. So, I mean, granted, it would make sense of, um, it, you know, people are coming here just like, where else are we going to go? We're going to go. Yeah. So it, that, that kind of does make sense. Also, I want to point out, if you look at the walls, you notice that a bunch of the wall has like cracks and is like broken down in some places, but you see like stones tacked on top of them. Yeah. Oh, here's the happy ending where the kids meet their mother. Yeah. Yay. Happy ending. Um, yeah. But, uh. Anyway, like I said, you see the wall has, like, cracks, but it's been, like, repaired and stuff like that. I do like that little detail. 
Because, I mean, you could just build the wall and just call it good. But, no, they they put the attention to detail to make it look like it had been crumbling in some places, yet put back together. Well, I mean, it, it's been there. Um, Since the second it's age. Been under attack before. Mm-hmm. It's old. It needs to be fortified and maintained. Yep. So, mm-hmm. yeah. It's so. not like it's a brand new wall. I thought that was popcorn. No, it's chips and the sauce that we bought. Because I'm hungry. That works. We have snacks here. I know we, you can't see us on camera, but we do have snacks. Like I said, I'm eating gummy bears. I love gummy bears. I always have. I am pretty well addicted to gummy bears. I'm sorry. Or, or gummy worms. Gummy worms I love too, but they, I only saw gummy bears there, so. Yeah, and there is like, where's Ergorn? He fell. He did. Yep, he did. He did. Uh, and then, yeah, I just... Um, to be, f- I understand that, yeah, it's like, oh, I man, I love this guy, but to be fair, you knew him for how long? Um, one defensive part that bugs me here is, uh, you see the wall, it goes up to their chest. Uh, you'd actually want those barricades to go all the way up and the slits that you see, you want those to be wide enough that you can see through. Right, yeah. Because that's how you defend people. You don't stand over them and shoot arrows, you stand in those slits and shoot arrows. <laughs> and here... Uh, this kind of always bugs me because that's just a wooden gate. It's um, wooden, it's a rusted metal. Is that rusted? I guess it's it could be. It's rusted metal. But I think you'd have that further out towards the front instead of so far back. Yeah. Um, but it is a plot point in later in the battle where the orcs literally break through there too and start rushing through there. So uh, Aragorn and Aramir are literally just running back and forth from the gate to the to that little hole you know, fighting off orcs as they run back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the scene here is like, it's going to take tens of thousands. By Lord, there is no such force. Once he see you immediately right after, hello. And that, I think that's a lot more than 10,000. Uh, honestly, I, I don't know. I'm not actually going to go through and count, but that's a lot of guys. <laughs> Um, um, and one thing we did miss is where uh, where Saruman's making those bombs, and we see like Grima lean over with the lit candle. It's like, no, stay, yeah, yeah. keep, yeah, yeah. See this? No, <laughs> you would make, uh, yeah. I don't, I don't need a new window in my living room. Thank you. Um. Also, I guess I should probably mention the reason. Um, the reason Saruman lives in Orkthang, the tower. Is because, I mean, his original job, because you remember, he's supposed to be a good wizard, and he originally was a good wizard. It's just, he would always, you know, talk to the king. I mean, he was, like, always dealing with the kings and stuff like that. So that's why they gave him the tower, whereas Gandalf was far more worried about, like, the, you know, the little people that no one pays attention to, I guess is the best way to say it. And then Radagast the Brown was more worried about nature. And the Blue Wizards, unfortunately, we have no idea because they went east and we don't know what to actually do. That's unfortunate. It's like we okay, we were specifically told five wizards. What about these two? They went east. What'd they do? I don't know. I don't know. That's one of I mean, granted. It never really got that far. Granted, it is because I mean, mind you, Tolkien didn't start writing the Lord of the Rings until I mean he was already getting elderly when he actually started writing. So it's probably one of those things that he just unfortunately he just passed away before he actually wrote down their stories. But it is kind of unfortunate. It's like, damn it, come on. We I was like, what did these two do? Did they right. Did they help? Did they get corrupted? Like, does he have any notes at all that talk of them? Uh, yeah, the only note that I that I at least know of off the top of my head is that only Gandalf is the one. Only Gandalf was the one actually doing what he was supposed to be doing. So I find it very likely that the other two were probably corrupted and became like maybe one of them was the Mouth of Sauron that we see in a bit. Mm. So, granted, that's in the third movie. That's this movie. Also, uh, Shelob is in the second book, not in the third book, like the movies have it. But if you actually look at the timeline, uh, because they encounter Shelob pretty much, I mean, if you look at the timeline, they encounter Shelob right during the Battle of Helm's Deep, or not Helm's Deep, um, right during the Battle of the Pelennor Fields. So that's why they put it into the third the third movie. So They it's also just, didn't want to compete with Harry Potter and the Chamber of Which also had its own which giant spider. Which also had a giant spider. Because uh-huh. the two movies came out the same year. Yeah. What was that? Uh, Aragoth? Aragog. Yeah, okay. I was close. 
Oh, and here we go. Brego again. Yay! Uh, why does he have a rope on his face still? I don't know. Yeah, yeah he was supposed saw, to be set free. No, he specifically saw Aragorn take the rope off. Yeah. It, we, yeah. And we know it's Brego because he calls him Brego. But yeah. But yeah, it's like, he, you know, you know, Aragorn said, set this guy free. Why would he still, he still, has, the <laughs> he still has everything on? Yeah. yeah, here. Um, and yeah, you see, you see, there's no saddle there when he stands up. But here, if you look, yeah, there's a clearly a saddle right there. And like I said, it's just, it's like borderline impossible to get an act to get a horror actor to ride a bareback horse without getting and not and get insurance for it. It's it's borderline impossible. I can only think of Hildago that did it. But even then, I'm like, okay, did it actually do it? Because I, I haven't actually watched that movie since it came out. So I've never watched it. So oh wow, it's not a bad movie, but it's certainly not good. I mean, granted, it's kind of, it was kind of because Viggo Mortensen was almost in this era where it's like, oh, he could have become the next major action star if he wanted. Um, but unfortunately, he just kind of chose a bunch of bad movies right after the other. I mean, granted, I don't blame him. I blame his agent. But I think he did the dog for the horses. Come on now. Yeah, that's true. But because uh, he did that, and then there was one other, uh, I can think of one other movie that came out around the same time, but I can't remember what it was called. Does it actually matter what he does? I'm sure yeah, he made point. enough money. Well, yeah, well, okay, to be fair, anybody in these movies made enough money that they could just go, I'm done, retire. <laughs> Even the child actors, I'm pretty sure. And plus with the royalties, too? Jeez. Yep. Yeah. Thanks, Dad. Yeah, thanks, thanks for the being such a Debbie Downer. <laughs> um... But also, I want to point out here, if you actually look at uh, his arms when we see them in a hit bit here, what's on his arms? The braces he got from Boromir. He keeps those for the rest of his life. And uh, this part here, um, actually, after Aragorn's death, uh, Arwen doesn't just linger there forever. She actually goes out into the woods and passes away, too. Because that's what um, elves who forsake their immortality will actually die with the humans. And then their spirits will go to wherever the spirits of humans go. We don't actually know. Uh, Lord of the Rings never told us. We're just told that they leave Middle Earth. Or leave the Earth, I guess. Her father's say. just trying to scare her. Yeah, yeah, right now her father's just like, no, you, yeah, you don't he, you don't know the story. I guess, yeah, well, she, she might. But anyway. But yeah, here, just the, like, very much a wandering witch type feel of, right. like, wandering in the dead wood. It's like that. You could take that movie and put it in a horror film, and it worked perfectly. And gosh, it's so hard to get a tear to fall down perfectly like that because it's just. I always, I always have to imagine it's like okay, I have to because you can't just like put water in your eyes and stare at the camera and then and then have it you know because your eyes will automatically be watering if you do that. So you have to just stand there and just like. Think of the saddest things you possibly can to, in order to cry like that. Because it's very hard, so hard to get a tear to fall so perfectly like that. That is one of the tricks to mm-hmm. crying on camera. Yeah. I mean, I know some movies have actually just said, oh, fuck it, we'll just G- CGI it. I know this movie didn't, but I do know that, yeah, it's here. Do I also still have your love? It's like, wow, where my da- dad? Yeah, thanks, dad. Jeez. <laughs> kind of a dick move there, dude. And here, wouldn't she be riding a horse? She's like the princess of Rivendell. I think she'd be riding a horse. None of them are on horses. Fine. Yeah, there are. There's one right there. Well, no one's on it, but there's a horse. Yeah. And Elrond said, yeah, "Yeah, it's like, yeah, are you happy, dude? Come on, dick." But like I said, in the books, Ar- Arwen has no. Arwen stays. She has absolutely no. She knows she's staying. Yeah. Just making it dramatic. Yeah, yeah, they're just adding for the drama. Gosh, man. And also the holding the light out is also like almost Grim Reaper esque too. I mean, granted, they don't have the sides, but just have, holding the lantern out like that. And here we go, Kate Blanchett again. Oh, they didn't have the Christmas lights strung up there for her no, eyes. No Christmas lights this time. Unfortunate. I mean, I'm glad, Grant, I'm glad they did it for the ones, the for those little few scenes. I think they should have done it for every scene she was in, though. Like I said, if it's one of those things of like, if you're gonna do it, go all in on it. Is what I'm saying. Er. Maybe they only wanted to do it when she was like using her power or something. Like maybe they're that's, that's true. That's fair. Be more symbolic with it. That's possible. 
Yeah. Yeah. There's Osgiliath, which uh, was originally the capital of Gondor, but it got moved because, well, yeah, it uh, kept coming down me under attack. So I was like, yeah, let's let's yeah, get. I was gonna say that doesn't look very defendable. Well, I mean, you got to remember, Minas Mor- what what me what's now is Minas Morgul, the city of the Witch King, was originally which was originally Minas Ethil, which was also a city of Gondor. But like I said, a plague hit, everybody died, and then the forces of evil took it over. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't think he would have ever seen it because I don't think Elrond has the foresight like the uh, uh, oh my gosh, like Galadriel does. And they, again, have so many shots of flipping the ring around because why the hell not? <laughs> yeah. And you see here, like, the the ring, I mean, none of these guys are being affected by the ring because they don't know it's the ring. They just think, oh, it's an object. The ring can only really affect you if it, if it know, if you know what it is. Because, I mean, I mean, because it's not, it's not, like... It, I mean, it's still just, I mean, as, as powerful as it is, it's still just an object. Like, for example, if I were to put my phone case next to you, it's not, my phone case is not going to start talking to you. Oh, damn it. <laughs> At least I hope not. If it does, I'm going to take you to the hospital. <laughs> well, there they, there they do Christmas lights. Right, there we go. <laughs> um, in this part, uh, in the books, what they, because what they're setting up here of the whole thing is like, Okay, we're gonna send a bunch of elves to fight alongside the humans at Helm's Deep. Uh, they don't act. That does not happen in the books. No. Yeah, our scouts have reported that uh, Rohan's been attacked, and so they're going to Helm's Deep. Why do I care about what's going on there? Tell me about what is going on here. Come on, dude. It's, I mean, the only reason they said that is for this part here. So Saruman attacks from Isgard, Saruman from Mordor, yeah. But like I said, it's very much like, I don't need to know what's going on over there. Tell me what's happening right here. <laughs> I think this is where we get our one flashback of uh, uh, Sean Bean. Nope, apparently not. I, I know it's in this movie. I just don't remember where. Yeah, and there uh, you can obviously tell Sam and Frodo are CGI added because yeah, they're, they're yeah, it's so it's so it it really shows it. I mean, here they're not, but it's like they're just probably just standing on their knees or something. But yeah, whatever. Like here, uh, yeah. Oh my gosh, it does not. Say, yeah, that's a they kind of failed there. I mean, granted, these were come out in like the two early two thousand, so maybe and that one guy standing, that one guy sitting in the background just. Uh, I know he's paying, it's like he's supposed to be paying attention, but he's almost like kind of zoned out. He's totally zoned out. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, the reason, I mean, that is he, like I said, it kind of looks like he's supposed to be paying attention, but you got to remember since they're not actually there when they show him, because it's obviously green screen, he has no, nothing to look right at. Now, like you said, they're on their knees. Yeah. When, and yeah, when they're walking behind them, and I think that dude's actually there behind Yeah, them. but you don't see his face, is my point. When you actually see his face, it's all green screen, and he's just, it says he has nothing to look at. No, I think they're <laughs> legit on their knees right now. Like, it doesn't look like the green screen, blue screen right now. Yeah. No, when, when they're in the close-up, it's them on their knees. But when I'm saying they're way pulled farther back, I don't know if they'll give us another shot of that. Like, if you can't see them from the waist down, I think they're just on their knees. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Them. But you're right. <laughs> yeah. Earlier when they were doing the full yeah. body shots. Yeah. And here, you're a friend of Boromir? Yeah, yeah he's my friend. Uh, friend is a loose term. Yeah, friend's a very loose him. term, but... Yeah, see, for my yeah, part, yeah. <laughs> I was a friend to Boromir, and he wasn't really yeah. a friend. Yeah, there, 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 obviously. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and the groovy end is like, what? How? What? <laughs> because he didn't know. He just he just know he tried to take the ring and he ran away. And there it's like as one of his campaign. Yeah. Yep. About six days passed. Yeah. This is also straight from the book. Uh, I knew he was dead before 
because, you know, he's my brother. He had one of those. Okay, this probably is where we get the flashback then. Although this is not what happened because you, he said just his horn washed up. This is what he sees here is just a dream. Because you do remember Bormir's body was went over a waterfall. I'm pretty sure if it went over a waterfall, it would not be in this pristine condition riding on a boat. Yeah, it definitely would have fallen out of the boat. Yeah. <laughs> it would still be like that. Yeah. Unless everything was tied together. Yeah. So like I said, it was just the horn that that so like I said, this is a dream. But yeah, well him fading away there pretty much. Yeah, that was him <laughs> dreaming and knowing in his heart he was yeah, dead before yeah. he found the horn. Mm-hmm. So I I know we get a splat. Is it here? Oh, here, yeah, here it is. Men cheering. Yeah, they didn't show the horn getting cleaved. Did yeah, it was literally suddenly up. in half at his waist. Yeah, like here. he was being shot with the arrow. There we go. Yes. <laughs> yep, and this is where we get to see Sean Bean totally go out on your speech, buddy, and he does. I do like if you look, yeah, a couple of them have like bandaged heads and stuff like that. I do kind of like that detail of like a couple of these guys got injured. They're not all in, all in pristine condition. Well, what? Who would say? Yeah. Bash! No barking. There we go. <laughs> this Bash! part. Bash! Yep. Oh, yeah, we, uh, they're all brothers. Yeah, great speech. Nice and short. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you have ale sitting ready after the battle. Wouldn't you have to like special order that? I think, yep, but they hey, brought it <laughs> they brought it. With, they knew they were going to win so bad. They brought yeah, the ale. I'm with. sure it's just part of their supplies for uh, an army this big to begin with. No, but that actually does remind me. I don't remember what battle it was, but there was a battle where they were so confident they were going to win. They brought all the ale with them, and then when the army got beaten and fled, the enemy army that won's like, "Hey, free ale." <laughs> Uh, here we go, Denethor. Yeah, I do like the bit there where he's like, I can't because even Boromir is like, you know, even Boromir is hesitant about his father. Uh, yeah. because like, you know, yeah, it's like, yeah, here he's like, the victory also belongs to Faramir. He's trying to, you know, he's yeah. trying to, like, my brother is also good, you know, but <sighs> yeah, here, you know, you see Boromir's like, dude, come on. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't, doesn't actually, he doesn't that. say anything, but but it's very much like, yeah, it, you give him no credit, and yet he tries. Yeah, he, there he speaks up, but yeah, yeah, and Denethor is in the books. Denethor is not this mean. I mean, he is mean to Faramir, but he's not this bad. It's just that. He's because he has a plan here too, and he's been waging a mental war with Sauron for so long. And literally, when Boromir dies, he just kind of breaks. And yeah, but I mean, mind you, he was never a good father. I, I, I need to put it forward, he was never a good father, but he wasn't so openly harsh like he is here. Yeah. Yeah, and here you can even see he's like even Boromir says it like, you know, I'm not the guy you should send on this. Yeah. Because <laughs> even Boromir recognizes like this is why I like Boromir so much. I mean more than I like Boromir because he knows his weakness. And I mean, although he does fall, he knows his weakness and he's like trying to do his best to yeah, and it's I mean, mind you, it's not only Denethor who's saying you must go. It's just also the elders of the, yeah, see, it's like here. It's like, no, my place is not my people, you know. But it's just, since he's the eldest son, he's, you know, by honor, he's dictated. to. So, yeah, and there. It's like, yeah, Barmir would be a lot better suited for this type of role. And even Barmir's like, yeah, send Barmir. He's a lot better, but but no, like I said, because... De- because Denethor and the elders of the city all it's like, no, it's yeah, it'd be you. So Boromir does go by, you know, like I said, he's the firstborn, so he should have the honor of going, even though he really doesn't want to. Although, uh, what I hope they, I don't think they do, but what they should have is him blowing his horn as he leaves, but I don't think they will. 
Yep. I don't think they're good. I think they really should, but I don't think they all. Damn it, they should. Because, like I said, that's a thing he always. That's a what he. Always, that's why he said he blew the horn when they were leaving the Rivendell. Because whenever he would leave a city, he would blow his horn. And now they didn't include it. That's unfortunate. Yeah, that was kind of funny. Granted, I do know a lot of times, especially when Gandalf's not on screen, because like, um, because Ian McKellen was he hadn't read the Lord of the Rings up to um up until being cast, but then he read the Lord of the Rings, and whenever. I mean, whenever he's on set between shots, he would always have the book open to the chapter that they were filming. So, yeah, and it's probably one of those things that they, they missed there that I, that I really wish they had included, but they didn't. And here. Uh, by, this is not actually, I don't remember if there's a forbidden pool. I don't think there is. Well, this isn't even in the book anyway, right? Yeah, I don't think so. That's why I'm pretty sure this is not in the book because I know they're not captured in any way. Uh, and then here it's like, why is it, why is entering the pool punishable by death? What's Especially so, when like if you're not from the land, how are you supposed to know whether yeah. or not? I think he's just trying to use it as a ruse to get. Yeah, because really yeah, out. yeah, he's like, yeah. Ah, oh, the pool is nice and cool. I know that song, sorry. <laughs> and then he's like, okay, shoot, he's raising his hand. Uh, yeah, that would actually be slapping a fish like that on the stone, assuming it didn't flip out of your hand, it would kill it. So, but no, he's got to whack it a few more times. And because, yeah, they did, he did, they did say earlier, he's like, you had a skull king creature that was with you. So, yeah, he knows that this is, so, yeah, that's a good point. You're probably right. Yeah, because Frodo wouldn't talk about it. Yeah, he was hoping to use it to find right, out yeah. what his quest was because he knows he knows more about Boromir. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and then here it's like, yeah, you can go down to him. Eh. Yeah, gosh, eating a raw fish. I know you can eat fish raw like that, but oh my gosh, I've never done it, and I just have to imagine the taste is horrible, and it's something I would never do because if that fish has any parasites. Yeah, you're gonna get them. Um, like I said, I know you can eat raw fish, but I mean, like that's what sushi is for the love of God. Um, but yeah, it's, but it's prepared properly. Yeah, you can eat raw fish, but you still have to prepare it properly. Mm -hmm. Like you said, you got to make sure there's no no, no parasites mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and this and that, and you still want to like separate it from the bone before eating it. Yep. I mean, he's uh, gnawing into this thing, skin and yeah. bone and all. And so. granted, and like wild animals do that, and that's mm -hmm. kind of the thing, right? Well, I mean, I, I remember, I, don't, I remember reading somewhere that like apparently, like eighty percent of wild animals everywhere have parasites of some regard. Of wild animals, to be clear, not not all animals, obviously. Like domesticated animals, obviously not. I mean, like maybe dogs have lice or worms and stuff like that, but for the most, yeah, ouch, dick move. What did I just say? I said don't hurt him. Yeah. Oh, God. Frodo's Yeah, and Frodo Grant's Frodo is not there, but it's like, come on. This is, I mean, enough for, you're really torturing this thing? He's skin and bones. Punching him once, you're going to break his, break everything. But yeah, we just realized because yeah, he was a hobbit and look his feet are absolutely huge too, so they're good point. Oh, there's your favorite cat. Yeah, they're all my favorites. Come on, Bert. I was hoping that would what happened last time and happened again where he tried to jump up the back and just no, fell no, 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 I know, but it was funny. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot less of a jump. Yeah. And here again, like I said, there are two separate I don't. I'm not sure if it's Follow split personality that. or ego or, or alter ego, whatever you want to call it. But um, but like I said, there are two distinct personalities. I guess it would be split personality. No, but um, the weird thing is, is that they acknowledge each other. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Split personalities acknowledge each other like that. Yeah, that's true. I'm not a psych major. I have no <laughs> idea. Like I said one's Gollum, one Smeagol. They're Gollum. <laughs> it says in this. Yeah. Uh, like I like, but personally, I like what Sam calls him: Slinker and Stinker. Slinker is Smeagol. Stinker is Gollum. And here he's like, "Yeah, use the ring, get out of here." Um, this is the one part where I'm gonna have 
issue of, you know, he's like, Justice wants put it on and then get out of here, escape. Um, Sam actually gets the ring later, and that's how he survives what happens in Kira's Ungle in the third movie. He literally puts the ring on. Um, and while he has the ring on, I want it's, it's the ring, like his ring, no, like is trying to corrupt Sam too. And he puts the ring on, and the ring just shows him like this vast, beautiful garden that's like, a, you know, just immaculate garden. And Sam's reaction is, well, who really wants a garden that big? So, <laughs> yeah. And then Frodo's like, if I put the ring on now, I don't know if I'm going to be able to take it off. Yeah, because he's too far gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's sure. too far gone now. So, whereas Sam has not been affected the same way yet. So. Right. Yeah, and here, this is their answer to all the riddles. I think, I almost feel like Sam should be, in this situation, Sam would be literally forcing himself between the two. Yeah, see, now the ring is trying, because now that, now that Faramir knows what the ring is, now it's like, okay, now it's trying to put his pull on him. I almost feel like Frodo's like reaching for a rock, but I still feel like for Sam should be like, no, like, you know, you get the hell away. Cause I mean, yeah, I mean, there's that, they have that whole thing is like, are you his bodyguard? I'm his gardener, but he's still, he would still be like, no, you, I mean, he treats Frodo. Like, I mean, uh, um, I forget what the, I forget what it's called, but he's never really like acted like that in any of this where like, he's yeah. Flung himself on top of Frodo mm -hmm. or like put himself between them. Yeah. In the book, in the books, he would have been, but but uh, he's kind of like the um the general's valet, I think it's called. And he's like, because you got to remember, the general is the guy making the plan, but you got to remember, there's a guy who's always with him, you know, making his food, giving him coffee, driving him wherever, and, you know, getting him whatever he needs to do, and that's what basically Sam is to Frodo. So, mountain of fire. I don't think Mount Doom's ever called the mountain of fire in the book, but hey. Like I said, in the books, Faramir, like, in the books, Faramir has, like, I mean, they don't actually full-on capture him like they do here. He just, like, has a conversation with them, and he's like, oh, okay, get going, go. He knows the importance of what they're doing. He's like, yeah, get the hell going. Why are you, still, why are you sitting here talking to me? Go. No, because they decided to really play on the... <laughs> yeah, I, no, I mean, there's, they, yeah, they had to, they had to, I mean, because there's no way you could be like, oh, this ring's all-powerful, it's corrupting everybody, and then Faramir is just like, oh, no, I'm good. Um, so they really had, this, so I do agree with the movie, you know, showing him, uh, wow, his horse is black now, or maybe it was just the lighting. Just yeah, okay, yeah, it was just the lighting, okay. Oh my god, you know, I just realized we haven't seen Mary and Pippin in the end in, like, forever. Yeah. Oh my god. They, yeah, they kind of take a real far backseat on this because, well, they don't really do too much, unfortunately. I mean, I kind of forgot what... Was he, he's like going to get all the ends. Yeah, he right? went out to get all the ends. Um, and then he came back when they were drinking the end drought and got eaten by the tree, basically. Yeah. And then he picked him up, and now and now they're marching to the end to the end to move to or whatever you want to call okay, it. So I guess but yeah, yeah, it's just to the yeah, <laughs> which is weird because like then afterwards it ends. They walk to the end. He sees the burned trees, and he like immediately goes back. Like it's. No, they don't immediately go back. He sees the burned trees. And he does. He puts out like a war call, and then all. Yeah, the and then they attack pretty quickly yeah. after that. But it's taken him forever to get to this yeah. meeting place. And here, I love this scene. He's like, "Where is he? You, the luckiest." I love this scene so much. <laughs> oh man, bless you, Lottie. I love it. And uh, Gimli speaking almost with a Scottish type accent with the laddie and everything. And here, and here's another good scene. I can see divorce being like Viking. I can see that too. Yeah, you're late. That here, you look terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Not everyone can be as yeah, good yeah. as you all the there time. There you go. Oh, that reminds me of a stupid joke. Um, there's a, there's a, I, I, I'm gonna make everybody listen. There's a stupid meme of like Aragorn go to the most beautiful women in the hall. He goes up to Eowyn. And it was, yes, move. I need to get to Legolas. <laughs> oh, man. 
And then she's like, oh, your boyfriend's like... Yeah, that is kind of what that looks like to her, right? That, like, they're, they're lovers. Yeah, my, like my guys... high school crush is yeah. still alive. A great host. Oh, God, there are so... They... I don't know what it was, but apparently they just had so many problems filming this shot because, like, Viggo Mortensen or someone would just say something insanely stupid, like, make puns of everything... Uh, they were just, they could not keep a straight face during trying to film this scene. Like, I know one take was like, they're going to make action figures of your lord ship with like, ar- with like a cho- arm chopping. <laughs> <And it's> like, <laughs> because apparently, like, apparently they just could not keep their inner child out for too long. And there, and there just totally came out. <laughs> On here. Uh, I, I, I like that they're trying to refer repair the door and grant the door should open outward shouldn't it yeah i feel like it should yeah <laughs> because that way because I mean, that way when it you know that way when they're trying to hit it you're trying to literally make the door open away it's not designed to open yeah um also for i mean i don't get me wrong i understand fortifying the door with the planks that they're doing should wouldn't it be better to literally have everybody get in and then put the planks on across that way if they also have to I break the damn no beams too Grant, I'm also kind of like, take every spare crate and rock you can find and shove it up against that pot door to make sure it's as fortified as possible. Right. Yeah, and here. Yeah, and here, this is a very much a speech to mo- to keep his men motivated of, oh yeah, they can, bur- yeah, if they destroy our crops, we'll, we're fine, you know, yeah, it doesn't matter, I mean, we're good. So long as we survive, we're good. So yeah, it's very, yeah, and then here, uh, look at the guys behind you, dude, and here's, here's what it's like. What'd you have me do? <laughs> yeah. This is one where there's like, I think everyone would have known better not to be speaking like this in front of the guys because like these guys are already at wit's end and you're going to start to demotivate them. No, it's like, no, we want to motivate you in every way we possibly can. Yeah, here. I I don't uh the elves and there's not too many elves left and the dwarves are kind of dealing with their own problems because they're because here's the thing. The orcs don't just attack the men, they're also attacking Erebor. They're attacking they're attacking the the the, 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 the words. They literally attack with Lorien too. I mean Galadriel literally puts on uses her ring of power to beat back a wave of orcs in attacking Lorien. So they got it's like yeah, we understand that you that you need help, but we kind of got our own problems to deal with here. Versus in this, where it's just kind of like they're just not even there. Unfortunately, I really do think that we should hear about how Erebor is under attack, or you know, stuff like that. And here, and here, this this makes no sense. We get the the birds, the spy birds of Saruman, but it's like, wouldn't he already know? Oh, he oh here we look who's back. <laughs> And here, um, I will say in the end, in the book, they little the ends decide to go to war. They don't they don't decide. Oh, we're not going to go to war, and then all of a sudden decide to go to war because um, because the ends already know what's happened. They're they just take this now as go to war. Whereas yeah. apparently here the ants don't know what happened, even though there's apparently always smoke rising from the south. Right, you would think. That yeah, the people maybe put two and two together there, buddy. Yeah, you would think the trees down there would have like said something. By now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, although I do like this. There's one tree that just, it's standing there already, but it just kind of wakes up. It's I don't remember which one it is, but you'll see it. Yeah, there it is, and then it just wakes. It was standing right there, and then it wakes up right there. I like that because apparently that tree got there first and just just waited for them. Yeah, chestnut ash. Yeah, this will come more than them, but many have come. There's like a dozen there, maybe. It's a lot. Yeah, that's true. They're slow, remember? They don't give a crap. <laughs> I love them. I love those ends. Yeah. And here, literally every man, everybody who can carry a sword is... Yep. Everybody into the caves, and if you can carry a sword, congratulations, you're drafted. Yeah, and here, 
this is also a thing of, of you know captains like literally being you know having the soldiers literally forcing them to go to bed because they've been awake for like six days straight. Yeah. And here it's like, I understand you want to fight, but right now the people need you down there. So freaking do it. Okay. Yeah. They're not you the, are. yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like, I understand. Yeah. Um, and what happens in the third movie is literally another result of her, of like I said, how, like I said, how words have power. Literally, there's a, it's a point in the third movie that we will get to in about, oh, three, a couple hours, but still. Did you literally just tie your hair back? Let's yeah, I don't know. That I was not. never managed to just literally tie my hair back with itself and have it stay. Yeah. <laughs> She's got to have some bobby bins. Mm-hmm. Movie magic. Yeah. And here it's like that guy who's clearly old, like he's old enough to have been retired for ten several long years. And there it's like that's just, granted he's old enough. I think it'd be, uh, I think it'd be. He's a teen. Yeah, he's. That's yeah, okay. I think. That's still yeah, crazy. this. Uh, there are a couple like where it's like, yeah, you want to show like a child being stripped on his mother, but he, that kid was, I think, uh, I think old enough to be like, yeah, I think the mother would be like, yeah, he can go. Versus trying to blame like, still her child. Yeah, I know that. That's true. Don't want to see him die. Yeah. Just gone through puberty. He's not yet like yeah. in life. What yeah, what what teenagers what, are still kids. What uh Gimli says here is best. Uh, you know, what you know, most have seen too many winters or too few. Exactly. It's like there, it's like she, you know, he hasn't seen enough winters yet. Is that's how they measured their years back in those days, how many winters they have had. Yeah, and a couple I do like how they have all the old extras. Um, one of the extras that we see in a bit, I don't think we actually see him until the actual battle starts, but I really I want to point him out. Uh, it here it here is like, okay, I don't want to demotivate these guys. So now we're gonna start speaking in Elvish, which they don't understand. <laughs> yeah, and here. This is not actually in the book, but I do appreciate them putting it in this because yeah, uh, you might have wanted to said that in uh, Elvish, buddy, but hey. <laughs> I think he got too angry. Yeah, a little, yeah. Yeah, in there. Let him go. Because, <laughs> yeah, even, like I said, Gimli and, and uh, um, blah, blah, words, my gosh. Gimli and Legolas are friends now. They are really good friends now. And this um, this is actually a song. Um, I know the song. I will not sing it. Because uh, Hama... Yeah, 24601! Hit... Sorry, wrong movie. Ah, that's nice. Oh, <laughs> I'm Jean Val. Jean... Sorry, wrong so, movie. Yeah, I know. Oh, man. I prefer the stage play, honestly, than the movie. But I've actually seen the stage play. It's amazing. But they did that in Sioux Falls once, and that was brilliant. I went there with Kendra, but oh, man. It was, I think it was like five hours long. It was a long one, but it was good. Yeah, it's long. Yeah. But yeah, like I said, this what he says here is an actual song. Where now the horse and the rider. So, um, but uh, you notice how he's talking to gambling, gambling here, whereas the original guy was Hama. Well, if you're anybody who wasn't paying attention, and you already said what happened, you know you like that guy. Yeah, he kind of got eaten by a war. So yeah, <laughs> there's that's the kid I think we should have seen being pulled away from this mother. That little guy there. Same one without his hat? Yeah, I don't think so. I think it was a little too. I think they could, yeah, in there. Yeah. And uh, once we get to the bit, oh, here we go. I do like this scene. It's like, all right, I'm, you know, I'm a kid, but I got that. <laughs> he just pulls the sword and shield. I knew he doesn't actually say anything, but it's just the way he's looking like trying, he's like almost trying to mentally prepare, like, all right, I'm going to, I got this. <laughs> Which apparently is what people do in Lopa situations where it's like, I'm going to die. But you know what? I'm going to take as many of you down with me as I can. Okay, one, two, three. Yeah, just shy of a dozen. So, and he's, I like you see Pippin's asleep, but Mary's pacing back and forth because Mary's very, he's antsy about this. They've been going for hours. They must have decided something by now. No, we just we've finished saying hello, and that's about it. (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is one little fault I have in that is like, oh, we just only fin- just finished saying good morning. You the so a meeting like this would literally go on for weeks, if not longer. I think in the books it does. In the it? books it goes on for a couple days, yeah. yeah but, it goes on for a very long time. But yeah, with the but it's the way they're but the way they're trying to portray it here, it's almost like it happens the same night. Right? I know that's what I mean. Like they should have showed them starting the meeting like a while yeah. ago, and then st- and then left them for a while to show that mm-hmm. the meeting took you know a couple of days instead it made it feel like it took them days to get to the meeting point yeah. and the meeting's super short mm-hmm. what i think they should have done is like have the meeting been going on and then mary and pippin like you know joke you know messing around in the background start drinking the end end drought and then a tree capture them and a tree bear like literally like would pause the meeting and be like hey stop it <laughs> but yeah there's always hope yeah. and here uh this part here uh this is a good sword that's, that's not actually sword. that's a crap sword. You can see the cracks all along it. And uh, plus I don't see how swinging it around super look hard. Yeah, that look at that. Oh my god. It doesn't even have oh, a filler. That is a very bad sword. Hala Samaha. Yeah, and sorry your dad got eaten by a warg. Yeah. There we go. Nice little montage put on the myth uh, myth put on the chain mail. Which again, I mentioned it earlier, is that all this chain mail was literally put together by two guys, and they're they're literally wore their fingertips off because they put on so much chain mail together. And here, here's your sword. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, we fought earlier. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing to forgive. <laughs> And this I love this part here. I had we had time I'd get this adjusted. <laughs> it's a little tight across the chest. You know, I wonder why, because dwarves are described as I mean, dwarves weigh the exact same as humans, even though they're like two, like they're considerably shorter, and that's because they're a lot more stout. They're a lot wider. Here. We see a bunch of elvish warriors, which, like I said, not in the book, but I do appreciate it. I do like I do like this change, honestly. Um, the only real thing I dislike is we'll see here in a bit. Wait for it. Also, should point out there aren't you if you look at the colors when they saw when you saw the colors in the original elven armor, it was like they were very springtime colors. Now these are basically fall colors, and because like the elves leading, so this is their autumn. Uh, I don't think Haldir would be the one leading them because Haldir was just a guardian of Lorien. He was just you know he was just a border guard there. I don't so I don't think he would be the one leading this. No, but this way they could. Uh, this yeah, they only. They, one they, actor, so yeah. it's cheaper. Yeah, that's why. But uh, granted, the way they sell it here is almost like yeah, we are we volunteered for this mission. We're not being ordered to come here. We volunteered to do this. So that's the way he. That's the way he says it. But still, <laughs> this part here, <laughs> that's a little intimidating. But hey. So yeah, and it makes sense. Okay, put all the guys up on or put all the guys up on the tower and put the elves across the wall because there are more elves than there are guys. Because apparently there's like a thousand elves and three hundred men. So and there we see Halleth again. <laughs> One thing that bugs I, I know why it's there, but it almost looks like all the elf helmets have shark shark fins. You know what I'm saying? They got yeah, the, I was the say, those yeah. I know, I know what I know what those are for, but it bugs me. <laughs> you could have picked up another spot. <laughs> See, Ghibli, just Ghibli's helmet sticking over. So I get you a box. Yep. <laughs> Whatever like you live by. Let's go play last night. <laughs> nice thunder. Um, also needs to be said, the stunt doubles were having a where I mean, because this was a miserable scene, so they made it as much fun as they could. So between takes. All the stunt doubles would start singing, and you know they'd start singing and so good songs, and they'd start jumping around because of it. (laughs) 
and rain because why the hell not? Even, I can't remember if there's actually rainy in the battle or not. I don't think it is. If it were raining that heavy, would I guess maybe would torches really be able to stay alight if it was raining that heavy? I don't know. Um, I mean, what's already yeah, it does take a while for yeah, things to. Go I get out. probably yeah, they would eventually be rained out. Yes, yeah. but I don't know if they'd actually hear the footsteps coming in the glittering caves, but. They're called the Glittering Caves. There's a bunch of gems and stuff. Well, given inside, the yeah. 10,000 people marching, it might be loud enough to, like, yeah. rumble the ground. I have no idea. No, but literally what Gimli does after the war, Gimli moves into Helm's Deep. He takes, I mean, he moves into the Glittering Caves, and they start selling all the jewels and stuff there. Because, they're because like I said, they're called the Glittering Caves. There's a bunch of gems and jewels and blah, blah, blah. They're like, they're like, um... You're, you're start, they're like Ilum from Star Wars, where they get all this lightsaber crystals. This part here uh, kind of bugs me. Okay, they are within archery range. Start shooting them. There should not be any second that you are not currently shooting them. Why are you taking this time? No, it's like, no, shoot them now. They are within range. Hit them. You should not be having this long standoff. This is not an old Western. Take them out. Yeah. <laughs> Although I do like the like that. It just... You see the breath because apparently it was pretty cold too during these shots. And then here, there's your sign, <laughs> there's your box. <laughs> and yeah, battle cries. And this part here, um, like I said, again, charge. You're not there's there. You're yeah, what are you doing here? Oh man, did we miss the scene where his um sword hits the camera? Whose sword? Aragorn's sword. I think we may have. I don't Damn remember. It. I don't remember what scene you're talking. I don't remember. Uh, it's one of the ones when he's talking to the king, and there's like a low camera, and like when Aragorn storms out, his sword hits the camera, and you see it jostle a little bit. I thought that wasn't that in the next movie. Oh, is it? I think I don't oh, remember. It, it could be. I don't. I don't. I, do, I think we may have missed it, but yeah, there. It's like why hold? Literally open fire. And again, I don't know why all the. Well, or because, I mean, like he shot. I yeah. don't know. Maybe because they're just on the edge of being. Yeah. Uh, in range, and so they wanted to wait yeah. closer to ensure. Um, I am I also going to say, uh, it is so hard to be able to hold a, ball, a bow at full draw like that. So you got to remember, a bunch of people are holding their arrows at full draw. No way they could do this. Okay, there's going to be an extra here I want to point out, because I know his story, because he said it to a... After after he was in this movie, he was on a, a radio cast, and he's just... He was so proud. Oh, it is uh, you'll, okay. I'll, I'll point him out here in a bit. He's coming up. Recently, release arrows. Apparently, because apparently you have to say release arrows and not just fire, but grant or loose, whatever they say. Did do they? <laughs> this guy here with the missing eye. Uh, he had lost his eye, and he was like, I mean, he was super self conscious about it. And when they put out, they put out the call. I mean, like I said, he's super depressed, super self conscious. So when they put out the call for extras, he went in. He didn't think he was gonna get it, but he went in, think, you know, hoping like maybe they'll find use for me. And Peter Jackson not only cast him, but literally gave him that little cameo with his missing eye. He was jazzed. I mean, he was so hyped up of like, yeah, that's me. I'm awesome. I'm in this movie. <laughs> so. I forget his name, but he was so super hyped. Okay, I do got to point out there was one extra there who's just kind of standing there. It's like, okay, uh, I, I understand there's not a lot you can really do, but this is supposed to be a battle. Do something, right? <laughs> yeah, and here, these berserkers. Uh, yeah, this is also a thing of berserkers going in without any armor, just charging in, and yeah. So yeah, and out. This is why you should wear armor. <laughs> And here we see Haldir's also a kick-ass guy because he ah he got thrown that one got thrown over. I don't know who that was, but yeah, Haldir's also handled his guys. Ah, cut his leg off. Yeah, that'll work. Yeah, yeah. Although this, yeah, this I love that Ghibli just slides right between his legs. That's two already. I'm on seventeen. <laughs> I'll have no point of ear on scoring me. Oh, <laughs> uh, kicks that guy right off the top of the ladder. It'd be easier for them to literally kill these guys as they came up the ladders. So why are they waiting for them to get on the walls to take them out? 
Ouch, that would hurt. <laughs> then uh, here's what you do. Throw the ladders back down. Also, I want to point out, you see all these people. It is a little hard to do that, though, because of the torque required to do it. And if you're not tall enough to, like, get it, you might not. Mm -hmm. Like, you'd push it, but it, there's a good chance it yeah. just fall right back. But uh, actually I, take a bit of force. I want to point out, um, that I'm pretty sure you can put anybody who knows anything about this, we can put two and two together. You see all the Urukai carrying these massive, long pikes and spears, but not any shields. The reason why, what's the roads, what's Rohan's best weapon? Horses. What's the best defense you can get about those? Long pointy sticks. So that's why they for went they went without shield. They most of them didn't have a lot of shields, but they all had these long pointy sticks. And also, if you look, if you watch the background, you see the tips have like little hooks on them. If you watch, you can see them literally helping push the ladders up. You see them hook the and push the ladders up. So, and here. We have decided you are not orcs. Apparently, they decided that in like 20 minutes. Or... Right? That's what I mean. Like, I feel like they should have shown this earlier in the movie and spaced mm -hmm. out how long this meeting took. Yeah. Rather than make it seem like getting here took forever. Yeah. I think, I think what I, what you just said is what I think they should have done is, like you said, have them be like, have them like, okay, they must have decided something now. And it's like, we just finished saying good morning. It's nighttime. And then cut to this scene where it's daytime. And then, then cut to the next scene where they decide, and it's nighttime again. Where you know that way we get a real progression time because it really does. Because what you say is one hundred percent true. It just it feels like they just been here for two minutes, and then it feels like they were here for hours saying good mornings. But within two minutes, they decided that they weren't orcs, and within another hour, maybe they decide not to go to war. And here, <laughs> this is how Gimli gets his score. He's just standing up on top of two ladders and knocking them up as they come across. Although this part kind of bugs me too. It's like, okay, yeah, they're using a testudo formation. Why don't they have the shields on their sides? And we're going to get our Peter K Jackson cameo coming up here in a bit. This one hurt. Ouch! Why don't they, don't they have anything to like throw onto the causeway to make it slippery so they fall off? Uh, they could have done something more to like... Well, it, since it's raining, it probably would have just washed off, but... Although um here we see that they this is why you would put the gate more towards the front of the wall, not way in the back like this. But in the in the books, it's I, it's really just magic that blows up the wall. It's not these bombs. So I do appreciate them using bombs versus what the what the um, what the books did. And also in the original animated movies, if anybody's ever seen those, it was also just magic that blew up the wall. And then this guy. A single arrow kills anybody else, but this guy, oh no, he's got two in his shoulders, can still apparently carry that thing, and still just jumps in. Kaboom. Um, although I don't think those bombs would be big enough to cause this much destruction. Ow. Yeah. Yeah, that looks cool. Yeah, very true. Like although the boulders were riding back down on the... <laughs> yeah, the, a bunch of boulders killed a bunch of the Earths. <laughs> It's like, hey, we don't have any catapults for some reason, but these rocks are doing their job. Why do they not have any trebuchets? I don't know. They do in the next movie. Yep. Trebuchets, catapults, and ballistas. We do. They do have ballista. The orcs have ballistas. We'll see them in a bit. Well, this here. They're bringing up the battery ram, so we're just going to throw all the guys at the edge off. What? Oh, I thought the guys on the edge. Oh, yeah. No, they're literally just pushing them off the bridge. It's like, How do they not have any? Not yeah, said. yeah. They don't have anything else behind it. They're just using the weight. There's of Peter that. Jackson. Peter Jackson, the guy who threw the spear. Um, but yeah, like like you said, um, and also a lot of if you look at a lot of old castles, what you see is they're literally they have they extend the castle wall out, and there's literally holes there, so that way they can just take a rock and just drop it down the hole on top of your head, and not have yeah. to throw it over a wall. Right. I forget what the actual. Fortification is called, but yeah, like hot oil, like whatever yeah. you can. Yeah, well, I, generally, they didn't really use oil because that's just, I mean, it's, I mean, the, how much oil do you have on a regular basis? So they use like a lot of water and sand because that would do just fine, too. Although, if you did have plenty of tar, you would use that because tar has the added advantage of being really sticky, right? So you heat that up and they're not getting that shit off. And though this part bugs me here, Aragorn's smart enough to knock spears away, that guy not. Oh, here we go. 
Superman Legacy again. Uh, good luck in this work. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever tried to sled ride down the steps? This would totally work if you had good balance. Uh, I don't want to try it. I don't have my balance. Well, I'm just saying. <laughs> theoretically, it's possible to totally do that. Yeah, it's possible, but not something. I Because I know people can. I'm not like, saying you personally can do it. I'm just saying. Well, I know skateboarders can do it. I know a bunch of skateboarders who can do it. I've seen video of skateboarders doing it. Please. And I mean, Power Rangers had the whole. I mean, granted, they were wearing roller blades, not skateboards. But they have that whole bit of them going. Granted, it was stunt doubles. But you have that whole bit of them riding down the stairs, too. Uh, and but it's like, oh my gosh, it's so hard. I would not want to try that because, like I said, I'm not good at balance. No, I'm too old for that shit now. Yeah. You have to be young to do that, and that way, if you do fall, you can get back up and not be dead. Exactly. If we were to do that now, we would break something. I can't even do that now. The bumps just from the steps would hurt my back. Yeah. We're old. Yeah, Master Mary. I think you could call him Mary Doc, but still. Yeah, uh, in the books, they decide to go to war. They don't decide to like send them on their packing on their way. Um, so I do like that's where that's the thing where it's like the books did this better of like no the ants know what's going on and they decide to go to war. Although this this part here is like Pippin. I think Pippin's more saying this to himself than he is to Mary. Oh, for sure. Because <laughs> he's like, because he wants to go fight too. He wants yeah. to, go, yeah, but. Yeah, and here, yeah. Yep. The woods of Tuckboro and Buckland would burn like the old wood and everything, even though the old wood is actually very haunted and shit like that. <laughs> I mean, hell, you almost got eaten by trees in the old wood. But hey. <laughs> yeah, only Mary knows what's up. But granted, when they do return to the Shire in the books, to the scouring of the Shire, I mean, Mary's the one who basically leads the... who leads the hobbits in the full-on war because fatty bulger was i mean he was leading the resistance but he was arrested and put in prison and it made they granted notice how i'm always calling him fatty bulger once they free him they can't call him fatty anymore <laughs> let's put it that way yeah and there this part kind of bugs me because it's like okay why are you trying to if you can because you, you see them all pulling away and then they close the gate behind them why are you even trying to defend the wall in the first place literally condense all your guys onto the tower <laughs> Yeah, like, listen, another elf had to really drag Gimli away. I do like that. Although this is an unfortunate part here. Ow. Yeah, we get to see Haldir die here, unfortunately. And it's like, damn. That uh, should watch out behind you there, buddy. Uh, that's the crap thing about yeah. battle is that things are yeah. going on 360. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, granted, it was very much he got stabbed, so he was like very he wasn't paying attention. He just got yeah, and there we see up all the dead elves around him. He's just and dead orcs too, for that matter. And it's like, yeah, what am I doing here? But yeah, and then yeah, he's gone. Unfortunate, but and then Aragorn being like, uh, this is a little too much here, buddy. It's like, yeah, I got this. <laughs> just to, Apparently, but apparently the ladders on the other side, apparently they went around and put a ladder up onto the wall too, because that water fell back where the stairs were. Yeah. So, although that they're just, yeah. yeah. Why didn't you have your helmets on already, dudes? Come on. I don't know how they don't have better defenses with yeah. the skate area. Yeah. Like you just have bodies up against it. You didn't have at least like benches. Yeah, you didn't. You didn't shove. You yeah, any, any you spare. You don't have any benches around for the guys to like hide behind to shoot at the door. Yeah. Oh, that that guy gets grabbed. Like this guy gets grabbed by the neck and there and chops his arm off. And then he takes a spear in his shoulder. It's like, oh, you gonna stab me with a spear? Well, take this. <laughs> yeah. They didn't, they didn't do a lot for this battle, but. <laughs> I, I, don't know, I just saw there was an extra literally hanging on top of the door, literally kicking. <laughs> I was gonna give that extra a raise, all right? <laughs> that was awesome. I'm sorry. Although, this part here, this is also accurate. Um, generally, it wouldn't be this close to the gate, but you would try to have these little small hidden doors that no one would notice. That way, you could, you know, sneak a couple soldiers out to the side. 
and attack them from the flanks. You wouldn't have it like this because this is just because that little door. What good is this going to do? You can just, I mean, there's, there, it doesn't lead down behind the army. It just leads to a jump to the gate. That's not enough. And the hair tossed me. <laughs> what? Don't tell the elf. <laughs> yeah. No one tosses a dwarf. <laughs> but nope, uh, here, you have to toss me. I don't tell the elf. <laughs> just chucks him. But oh man, that is quite the leap. Yep. And then they have these two. Oh, don't worry, the two you send out your aces, and they literally chop everybody a bit. And a couple of the a couple of your Uruks still at the door didn't even realize they were yeah, here. Yeah, okay, why, why didn't you did have you those? Why yeah, here we see some why ballistas. Did you wait until like it was breached to do Yeah, this? why yeah, why did you have this already? But yeah, here we see some ballistas. Although not they're not actually being used as ballistas would be used, but hey. Ah. I mean, I would say, why don't they try to push them off? But I don't think they'd no, have enough, especially they're... now with and all the like weight being put on it. Yeah, there's no way you can shove these no. off now. Gosh, there's so many you guys on those. I grant they're all CGI, but but here's what you do again. You set them on fire. Yeah, yeah, that's yours. Or you could just do what Lightless does. <laughs> oh, there's another ladder coming up. Don't worry, guys. I got this. Shoot an arrow, take the rope out, and uh, yeah, bye bye. <laughs> this would hurt. Ow. Yeah, they're all dead. Yeah, why were they, yeah, like you said? Why were these why were these things not shoved up against the door already? Like, take every sp every spare crate, rock, and anything you can find and shove it up against that door. Yeah, there. And they escape by rope. And none of these guys, none of the guys who apparently have crossbows, decide to take aim at the two guys scaling the. And I think they should have someone else helping Layla's out there. Right? Like, damn. Yeah. Oh, that poor guy. Ouch. Apparently, the rope got severed and he, yeah, he just got completely. But like I said, this is actually not a good attack strategy because literally all you have to do is one guy with a spear at top of that ladder and just kill them as they come up. Although this guy here is like, I got this. And it comes up and just gets beaten down. Yeah, and now pull back. Yeah, yeah and now the bro gate's broken. Yeah. That, yeah, like you said, the door sucked. And here's the thing. If we see everybody fleeing up into the other doors, why don't you have doors at that door and the other door they're coming in at? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, fortify everything. Don't just... Right. Yeah, you see the orcs coming in there too. So, yeah, in here. Although I do like this part where Pippin's like, "All right, I'm gonna Pippin's doing something useful." <laughs> yeah, Mary's all defeated, and then Pippin's like, "No, wait, wait, stop." <laughs> Take a cell. <laughs> that would lead you past, I think. So it's brave. So this is very much like okay, the Ents don't actually know what Isengard is doing. So I Pippin. I think they would because I thought yeah. they even mentioned that in the first yeah. movie. How like the trees were crying that they were being cut down and burned. I don't remember. Um, they may have. Uh, but like, but I like, but Pippin's strategy is because, like I said, the Ents apparently don't know what's been going on. So Pippin's like, okay, we're gonna show you what's going on. That'll get him. <laughs> yeah. But like I said, in the book, like you said, if what you said is true, then that's a big continuity error. But in the books, they already know what's going on. The you know, Ents like, already know, and they decide to fight. They, like, something. they may have. They probably did, but I just wasn't paying attention and whatever. Yeah, are you mad? We'll be caught. No, I got this. <laughs> like I said, Pimpin doing something useful. Yeah, I don't think if you're gonna reinforce the city, I don't think you'd bring your prisoners with. But 
But no, he's bringing them because he's bringing the ring to Gondor like yeah. his father sent Boromir to do. Fair enough. He's trying to get his father's on like yeah. he's trying to. He's, please he's, love me, Daddy. That's exactly <laughs> what he's doing. He's doing what his brother failed to do. Yeah. That's why Frodo said the ring can't save Gondor. Mm-hmm. And here we go. Apparently, uh, his eyes are open. He would have said saw something before now, but apparently didn't see something oh, until he's at least 20 feet out from the tree line. Right. Like, you would have seen this as soon as you cleared the tree line. Mm-hmm. Well, probably even before. Oh. Creature side nut from nut and acorn. <laughs> Yeah, I'm in here. Wizard should know better. Yep. War call. Nice shot of force, though. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no curse and elvish. <laughs> yeah. Ah. Yep, and this and the act the trees actually do move. Yep, the trees are gonna go deal with the orcs because the trees actually start. Yeah, they actually I think they show it in later. later. I, I don't remember if they show it at the end of this movie or at the beginning of the next movie, but they do actually show. <laughs> you see all the orcs run into the trees, and all of a sudden they just the trees start shaking, and everybody's dead. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there are a lot more ints there than there were at the meeting. Right. <laughs> yes. Only like what? A dozen of them, maybe. Yeah, a dozen of them at the meeting. meeting. And there's like probably. Or were the dozen like the um the elders, like the leaders? Maybe. I guess you could make that argument. Those are like the twelve elders, and then this is all of them. Yeah. Because here, there's like, gosh, fifty, me, yeah, probably even more than that. Yeah, although why the orcs in Isengard not see this coming and like, oh shit! I do like I do like the L, the uh, Christmas tree one end there. <laughs> it's not uh, evergreen, I guess, but. But the orcs probably like, um, I did, how did the forest tree line yeah. get here? Thought we cut these down already. Yeah. Because I mean, here's the real bit kicker. Saruman knows of the ends. You think he'd be like, hey, by the way. No, he didn't give a crap. That was he made that statement earlier too. Because yeah. they were like, we're running out of wood to burn. Cut down the trees. He knew what he was doing. Mm. Yep, New York's have taken the eastern shore already. Then here yeah, here. I like this scene of of Sam Louie talking to him, and he just he can't even hear him. He's just muted speech. <laughs> yeah, here, take them to my father. <laughs> I do like I I do like the little the looks. It's like. This is a mighty gift. What? <laughs> I like because they don't know what they what that is. So it's like, what the heck are you talking about, dude? The Billion Ranger. Oh man, they got catapults here apparently. Right. Yep. There he is. <laughs> you beat me to it. <laughs> anyway. Okay, cover. Yeah, 
and yes, the it is specifically described that the that the Nazgul have bell beast and they can fly. I mean, Legolas literally shoots one out of the air in the. I don't remember if it's in this book or the next book, but because they they encounter a Nazgul, you know, flying, is screeching, and Legolas and then on a well beast, so Legolas is like, all right, I got this. Takes an arrow, shoots it out of the sky. Oh, here it's like, okay, yeah, we conquered, so we're gonna hang our flags up now. Uh, it's like you guys still got to kill everybody. I think you got more important shit to deal with. Right. Again. Why was all the you're putting all the shit up against this door? Why was all that shut door shit all not already stacked up against the main? I mean, they retreated to the store, right. so it, it makes sense that this wasn't already fortified. That uh, you would think they would have. Yeah, to uh, there. I one part I like there is you see like Aragorn trying to help Legolas out lift up something, and then Layla, like Aragorn turns around and talks to the king, and then you look you see Layla is like, "Damn, what the hell are you doing?" He's like, Just totally drop it. Yeah, it's like yeah, it just really lifts up a table, breaks it. <laughs> Ow. Got the barricade at the entrance. What did and, you think was gonna happen, Theoden? Yeah. You yeah. led them here. Uh, nothing yeah. because you didn't want help. In the book, it's Theoden's idea to ride out and Aragorn goes with, but in this they decide to have it be Aragorn, but I think they could I think they should have left it for Theoden, but hey. Sun is rising. <laughs> Almost kind of like, okay, I'm going to look to the, out the window to the east. Maybe that'll, maybe we can stay in here and that'll do it. No. Elm Hammond. Ow. Right. This one thing, just kidding. I guess I should wait. Yeah, here. Gimli goes up to this massive horn. I don't know if he would have the lung power to be able to blow a horn that big. Because <laughs> look at because look at it's a giant horn that goes all over. Yeah, that's uh, I don't know if you'd have enough lung capacity to be able to. Yeah. Like everybody there would have to be blown together to do it, but. I always see the king in nice golden armor. <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> oh, that'll work. Cut the helmet thing. Leave that guy's face in two. Why not? This, I don't think this would work because those horses would get tripped up by all the bodies. So yeah, the Legolas' yeah. horse, the Aeron is literally just pushing the bodies aside with his hooves. I don't think they can really do that, but hey, why not? It's all CGI. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's, it's not as bad as this part here where it's like, Oh, there's a sheer cliff face here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, I'm here. To the king. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's like I said, they just charge these horses down what's almost a sheer cliff face. Um, I'm not so sure. <laughs> Cause look at look at that. that is a very <laughs> steep hill. I don't think a car could do that. Yeah, you're not riding up it. That's for sure. Hey, <laughs> yeah, this part here, we'll see that. Yeah, they start lower spikes because that's how you deal with horses. Big funny spikes, but. No, it's a sun cup. Yeah, that makes it a lot more difficult. And unfortunately, they kind of raise up their spears. Even though you think the orcs would be like, okay, I 
I'm being blinded by the sun, but I know you're coming from that way, so I'm just going to close my eyes and keep my spear pointed that way. Right? Yeah. But apparently they're not that clever. No, they're not that clever at all. There we go. Check a rock. Yes. <laughs> I love this. Boom. <laughs> Yeah, and this is this is very much okay. Yeah, one orc one and picks up an orc and starts uses it to knock over like, whack all the other ends. This is very much like I feel like this is almost like watching like toddlers play like destroy things because I mean we see one end pick up two orcs and like bash them together. Out oh, there you go. That'll kill him. He fell off the. Yeah. Hey, they're helping. But yeah, like I said, I feel like I'm watching the ends do all this. I literally feel like they're just like there you go, bam. Yeah. <laughs> Although you're, oh, that's yeah, uh, there we get it later. But um, in the books, the orcs do like launch a flamethrower and kill one of the ends like that. But it's just there's so many ends and like only a hundred orcs here at this time that they just don't stand a chance. But uh, we <laughs> yeah. Yeah, why wouldn't you have? Why would you even bother going to or to or to Isengard in the first place? Just go take out the dam to begin with. Um, maybe they had to walk by Isengard to get there. Yeah, dam. maybe that's fair. I have no idea. Yeah. No, Hello, that's up off the hill. Yeah, you're yeah, probably gonna go. I have go. no idea. Maybe it just took them a while to get to it because it's on the hill. I have no idea. Yeah. Although, um, <laughs> there is one fun part. Uh, everybody, hold on. <laughs> we saw the one end get watch up, get set on fire. Watch what happens here. You'll see it. You're the one that runs into it. Yeah, one little. Yeah, one little. Yeah, there you go. He's on fire. All right, I got this. <laughs> Just go dumps himself in the water. Yep, and he works down here and getting drowned. <laughs> So that was that CGI was not too good, but hey, I'm not I can't hold it against them. Water is very hard to do realistically, and I mean, that's I think that's miniature with little CGI things running on it. Because that's one thing, water is very hard to do in CGI. Um, now we have now it's been modeled to look more realistic, but at this time it was so damn difficult. Yeah. Hey, Burberry, you match the subtitles. You rumble. <laughs> I heard that. I was like, was that your stomach? Are you hungry or what? That but was no. The cat. That was the cat. Okay. <laughs> the cat's adding his own commentary. Why not? <laughs> Who knew that cats could read subtitles? Look here. Like I said, the although the ring wraith can only see like a shadow there, it can, I might be able to see the ring sticking out. Um, but the Nazgul, the fell beast, can easily see him. And then Sam, don't worry, Sam's got this. And I like how I like how Sam has the attention to detail to literally pull his finger away from the ring. Yeah. All this, but ouch! Oh gosh, falling down the stairs would definitely hurt. It's me. It's your Sam. Yeah. Yeah, Sting's not glowing. How is Sting not glowing? Yeah, so that, yeah I was just about to ask that. Yeah, yeah, you're surrounded by a bunch of orcs, and that's not glowing. Don't you know you're Sam? <laughs> yep. Yeah. yeah, and now he's like, oh, shit, what am I doing? Sword clangs. Here we get a nice little speech. Man, his chain is some like with the ring on it, suddenly it's very like long. Mm -hmm. It's very inconsistent in length. Yeah, it is. Sometimes it's just like just barely tucked below his shirt, but right now it like goes down to his yeah. waist. Like, yeah, pretty on. much, yeah. Apparently that one that one fell beast, even though that Nascal probably knew that was going after the guy with the ring, is now flying away. Granted, the fell beast did just get hit with an arrow, so maybe the fell beast is like, oh, 
Yeah. Fuck you, I'm in pain. Nope. <laughs> I'm not doing this. I'm in pain. I'm going home. Because, I mean, I know that has happened of, like, people with, like, cavalry that would be riding horses. And the horse would be like, no, it's like, screw you, I'm done. <laughs> Yeah, we have victory, but we're still going to knock these. Somehow 2,000 people made a difference against 10,000. Yeah. 300 versus 10,000 at 2,300 versus Yeah, 10, there you 000. go. <laughs> that's, that's, you literally just did. I know you guys don't have, you can't see, but you literally just did the meme of, like, of, of that, uh, like, like uh, the one guy who's like, oh, no, not that, but then something else, like, oh, yeah. You literally just made that exact. Yeah, that was so sarcastic. Yeah, that's not how this math works. Still. Yeah, I know. <sighs> Although, granted, there was about a thousand elves too, so there was that, but still. So it was thirty three hundred versus ten. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, you're not. You're yeah, you're not outnumbered five to one. You're only at numbered, you know, three to one, but still. And here, that's Smeagol's look, so I'm not, or not, not Smeagol, Gollum's face, so I'm a little bit, but. There's a good world in this photo. Sam looks like he's about to start crying there. Yeah. And even, even, even like, even apparently Gollum's like, damn, maybe. Again, that's we understand each other. Uh, yeah. Although this is one thing that kind of bugs me is like in the beginning of the, you know, in the beginning of the first movie, they say, okay, don't use the name Baggins outside the Shire because that, you know, Bilbo used to name too flippantly. But now he's going around to everybody. Oh yeah, I'm Mr. Baggins. No, I think you should still be like, no, I'm Mr. Underhill or whatever. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Sam's like, no, get your hand off me. <laughs> Like you heard him really yeah. Although here it's like <laughs> the force has expanded. Hmm. Yeah, and, and yeah, Aramir's the one like, no, don't don't go anywhere near this. <laughs> something's up. Yeah, you can just tell by looking, it's like, don't go anywhere near this. This is something's up. But yeah, all the orcs the orcs are just panicked. It's like, okay. <laughs> but yeah, I love this. They all flee into the forest. And you just see, I just love this. You just all the trees start shaking violently. <laughs> A bunch of screaming and yelling. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. You're not kind of boyfriend is hair alive, I guess. I don't know. Although here, here's another good scene. Although I don't think the math really lines up with what we saw, but hey, why not? <laughs> Four point a year now, all this Prince Link. Yeah. And then here's 43. He was already dead. And here, uh, literally, John Rice Dave, he's sitting on an extra, and then when he does this, the extra starts twitching. <laughs> that poor guy. Yeah, they're yeah they're standing in the water up to their waist. I I think the water might be a little bit deeper than that, and I still want to stand in it because only God only knows, you know how what how fast that water might be rushing. And it's like yeah, um, yeah, I'm taller than you. What are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah, no, it isn't. I'm sorry. Oh, look at this. <laughs> it's an apple. I wonder. Yeah, I love how he looks up. <laughs> yeah, and then, and then Mary sees a floating chicken. Uh, I don't eat that. <laughs> it's like old turkey. Yeah, don't eat that. Don't eat anything floating around in the water because God only knows what's in the water. But oh, look at this. Sour around storm, but oh, look at that. South Farthing. 
hmm. And remember how Saruman said that the ha- love of the halfling's leaf has clearly slowed your mind? Well, what's Saruman beginning into? The halfling's leaf. <laughs> Here, we think we should share with Treebeard. Um, <laughs> Treebeard's a plant. <laughs> no, no, and I like his, his reason, a dead plant and all that. Yeah, it's like, ah, uh, I don't, yeah, <laughs> good point. <laughs> they still have their pipes. Where did that come from? I don't know. <laughs> And they just, I do love this. Like, creepers, what the hell's going on here? And then just a bunch oh of smoke God. billowing out. <laughs> oh, man. Although it is, though, it is implied that, I mean, Treebeard knows what smoking is. I mean, he's very good friends with Gandalf for that. Uh, yeah, he knows what smoking is. But <laughs> he's the old sewer. Uh, by the way, the, um, the sewers are not the secret escape route. They are how you provide sewer, you know, plumbing to the city. <laughs> yep. I rem- that is from the book, but I don't remember who says it. I don't think it's Sam. Yeah, I, who knew that gardeners are such high honor? <laughs> Although this part here, care of Uh. <laughs> I'm like, I should probably go. No, <laughs> yeah. that's no, that's not where I'm gonna take him. Yeah, yeah. Is this where you take him? Yeah. This is dark terror that dwells in the past of the small world. I almost have this movie memorized. My gosh. <laughs> Do you have any other ideas for? Him yeah, there? that yeah. This point is like, okay, where else can we go, dude? You know. You, we all know that walking through the gates of Mordor is a terrible idea. Yeah, so. No, but. I mean, here's the thing. Uh, both Sauron and Shelob knew of each other. And it's just, it's, I like this. Yeah, make death find you quickly if you bring them to harm. Yep. Uh, I mean, what what do you mean by quickly? Sometimes yeah. does pass between Shelob and him actually dying. Yeah, but his death itself is quick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And here's Sam trying to be a good guy. He's like, he was trying to save you. They were gonna. I think he should be like, they were gonna kill you. He had to. I mean, it, he had to do it. He doesn't. He didn't want them to hurt you. But he, you know, they were gonna kill you, dude. So I mean, here he's like, yeah, I, I, he's like, yeah, I get it, I get it, but, <laughs> but yeah, he's not, yeah, very decent of you, very decent indeed. <laughs> I kind of wish that Sam would call Gollum Smeagol, but he never does in the book, so I understand why he never does. But yeah. And apparently the fires of Morgor can be seen all this distance away, but... I mean, granted, that's how they... Granted, it is said this is how he's protecting the orcs from being able to move in sunlight. He's making a giant cloud so that they, you know, that way the sun can't go through to see them, so that way they're protected. That but. Makes sense, yeah. Yeah, you're fucked. Yeah. <laughs> I just, like the way you said that. It's like our hopes lie on two little hobbits somewhere in the wilderness. It's someone's like we are so doomed. Oh, here we go. Here's a good scene. Let's hear about Frodo of the Nine Fingers. <laughs> <laughs> I give you points on that. That was good. I yeah. did try to watch the animated version at one point. Oh gosh, that is. Uh, I made it about five minutes. That's a piece of work. Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I've sat through it, in, it entirely, and it's it's something. It is something. <laughs> it's not as good. It's I won't. I, it's not the worst thing I've ever seen. I yeah. the worst one. The worst. Okay, the worst Lord of the Rings adaptation I've ever seen was they tried to make a Russian version. Oh, it was horrible. 
And the only reason I saw it is because one of my teachers growing up was was um, from Russia and had it on like uh, VHS. And like, so it was like, like it was like a, like I think it was like the day before, like um, um, not Christmas, um, Easter. Whereas, like, you know, so we got that four day weekend. So I don't want to do anything. So here he we just, just put that said in. That he's not gonna wait for Smeagol, but Smeagol's the only one that knows where they're going. Yeah. 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 Poor, poor Smeagol. Yeah. Oh, that, yeah. <laughs> Gosh, you would get so many splinters if you were actually run do that to a piece of branch. That would be it would be yeah. rough and the bark would rip, it, eat into your hands so bad. Yeah. And then here, but the fat hobbit nose. <laughs> Eyes watching. Then <laughs> we stab him out. out. Jesus. <laughs> Make him crawl. Yeah, it's like yes, yes, yeah. Oh wait, no, no, no. <laughs> A little too. It's too risky. It's too risky. And then here. We could let her do it. And Gaul, I always like how Gollum is like he says yes, precious. She could. He's almost like he's referring to Smeagol as precious too. So yeah, it's a little weird. Kind of sound that way. <laughs> and. It is said in the books that uh, Smeagol seems to favor. I mean, he only he only walks on two legs, but he does tend to like bend over and use his hands just as much. So they do kind of, they do kind of go in on that too. So, but he is described as being able to to walk on two legs. So, and here, look at all. Jeez, apparently, not only is that mountain volcanic, the entire land is volcanic. Apparently, but. Apparently, apparently it's Hawaii, I guess. It is. So a volcanic swamp. <laughs> yeah, there you go. All right, Fran Walsh. Okay, Fran Walsh was the lady who did the scream for the Nazgul. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> like I said, as soon as I see, as soon as I saw the name, I would think of it. And yep. And like I said, she's not an actress. She's a one of the producers. So, all right, everybody, we're gonna take like an hour break to you know get some food and stuff. Um, so go ahead. Do whatever you need to do, and we will be back in prop, like I said, probably about an hour plus, and we will start the return of the king. Thank you, everybody.